so exciting. Apparently, producer just said to me, he said, it's properly snowing outside. Is it really? No, you're just making that up. It wasn't snowing a minute ago. It's tipping it down, is it really? So excited. I tell you what, do the programme by yourself. I'm going to go and sit and watch Snow Patrol. Because that's what we're talking about this morning. Um, you know, because yesterday, people were saying, oh, it's snowing where we are. And then people sent me in pictures. And that was lovely. Pratt's bottom, as usual, under about 15 metres of snow. And now we've got it in Leicester Square, which is lovely. They're really coming down heavy. No! That's so exciting. By the way, if you're thinking of coming in to work early, I'd do it a bit early. Don't leave it too late today. On the programme, the Ice Cream King, who says he sold three million cones. They always make it up, don't they? Doddy's tickled to go home. Could the Spice Girls be singing at Prince Harry's wedding? God, I do hope not. Gemma Collins threatens legal action because somebody criticised her nail technician. Oh, grow up. Grow up. I'll see. I'll sue somebody for having a kick at somebody's nail technician. But there again, she's not the brightest penny. I'm going to sue because I'm the GC. What's got to do with you, love? What's got to do with you? They're suing, you know. You, oh, God, she's too stupid for words. And then some poor creature called Mary wrote to me from Salisbury. And um, she says, please remember. You can tell, can't you? You can tell it's going to be sort of something very... What are they all doing out there? They're all rushing around looking at snow. What are they doing? What's going on out there? What do you do? Oh, Paul Smith's now very excited about it. Have you not seen snow before? You come from the Grampians. I can't understand. What, what is this? Is everybody coming in to look at snow? I've arranged it. OK, there are other windows available. Just thought we'd do that now. Look at you, honestly. You all just love it, Dave. Woo, it's snow. <laughs> it's bigger than that, Emma. Um, also, um, it says here, uh, the day before today is called yesterday, not the other day. No, it's the other day, dear. God, you're really, you must be very ancient. You're not the same age as Doddy, are you? Uh, LBC says uh, it's for the more intelligent listener. Yes, I would agree. Uh, and says, so we don't know the reality people you obsess about every day. Well, everybody else seems to. You must, you're the only one who doesn't know who anybody is. Mind you, you are in Salisbury. It is a little bit isolated. And says, please don't become a troll about Prince Harry and his fiancée. It borders on ignorance. Actually, Mary, you don't realise, do you? You're the troll. You're the troll. You've just trolled me. You're a troll, but luckily I've got your address here. Number 17, is it? We'll be hanging on to that one, Mary. OK? You're, you're the troll. Perhaps you don't realise. Perhaps you don't realise. 84850, steve at lbc.co.uk. Davey says it's snowing hard at Clapham Junction. Look at this. Honestly, wasted at five past four in the morning, isn't it, really? You'd expect it to sort of come in a bit later. But it means that your trains might be um, all over the place. Very kindly, the hospital have sent me a new arm bandage it's a it's um a tight bandage to keep my skin graft in place and i was i was sort of running out as they say uh what else do we have chloe sims i know who yes she's still around uh, brands mark right disrespectful for liking racy photos it's just that nobody ever likes racy photos of poor chloe sims what do you do for a living dear answer nobody knows how much to put a, a toddler through nursery in a week 122 quid i would thought that sounds quite cheap to be honest with you holly and phil cry on air as simon thomas talks about his late wife and having to sell his uh, nine-year-old son that mummy didn't make it that the doctors couldn't do anything for her because she had this rare form of leukemia and you remember simon used to be a blue peter presenter and uh, then he was uh, sky sports presenter and uh, his, his wife was diagnosed three days three days before she died and uh, he went to see her in hospital and uh, and she died and he had to go home and tell his son because you know at nine years old i said uh, i said before if he'd been two or three it wouldn't have made any difference because he wouldn't have known at two or three but at nine they know what it is you know we couldn't bring mummy back he didn't know how ill mummy was and she was she was very very sick and so she died and then he was telling phil and uh, and um uh, Holly Willoughby the other day and uh, they got very emotional about it as indeed you would because he's spoken about it so often now it's it's not that he's devoid of emotion because I should imagine it's all racing around in his mind when he has those quiet moments by himself uh, Hollywood legend Stan Laurel plays a Roman soldier on stage with his first comedy partner who was called Ted Desmond it wasn't uh, Oliver Hardy at all Elton's mum leaves him nothing nothing which is okay that's all right, because uh, he's got loads of money, doesn't need his mum's money. She had about 500,000 quid. And um, the, 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 the great headline, which you might have heard uh, a minute ago, is Don't let the sun get a dime from me. 
don't let a son get a dime from me, which is good. Uh, 84850, Chris at, uh, at Retrack. What's Retrack? I don't even know what Retrack is. But uh, my new favourite presenter, especially during the turmoil of this awful weather and that snow joke, keep up the good work to keep me going through these night shifts. Snowing in Crystal Palace and it's snowing in Mitcham, where apparently the... Uh, the beyond belief quote is that they've had four inches. Bit of a record, I think, for uh, for Mitchum, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, also, the G-spot is a myth. That'll ruin everybody's breakfast, won't it? And bad news for Cheryl Tweedy's spag bowl. The record company may drop her over fears that uh, that she won't sell records. They think that, you know, she's not had a hit for God knows how many years. And so um, they might drop her, which, of course, would be terribly embarrassing. Terribly embarrassing. Uh, and... Um, the other story, it's a very interesting story, actually. Wait a minute. Hmm. And it's about Bernie Ecclestons. Uh, do you remember that one of his daughters was married to a Mr Stunt? And uh, an, a rather ugly little man. A bit stupid, a bit simple. And he's been absolutely annihilating Bernie Eccleston. And, not, and him and his daughters and all the... Oh, dear me, I tell you. <gasps> oh. Very funny. Uh, so we'll come around to that. Monica Lewinsky, a little bit economical with the truth. She sort of said, oh, you know, hashtag me too, when they were talking about all the abuse for women and people have been taken advantage of. And yet every picture that people have of Monica Lewinsky is her with a big smile on her face, throwing her arms around Bill Clinton's neck. So, you know, a little bit economic. I mean, she has made a living out of talking about it. She's done a piece in Vogue, I think, this month. Uh, Preda Monger will give a 10 pence refund if you take back plastic bottle so that's good news and um corbyn given a harassment or harassment dossier uh, plus if you want to find new friends and who doesn't want to find new friends get a dog get a dog if you take a dog people will talk to you no, clone dog would be okay you could have a cloned dog they were talking about cloned dogs aren't they earlier on which is good uh, 10 ways to fly without fear and olivia atwood some desperado Talks of her heartache over Chris Hughes. They were both on a tacky little programme. They Neither of them have any talent whatsoever. But they went out with each other, so we're assuming they must have done the deed. And uh, now they're not going out, and uh, that's all they talk about. It's so boring. These people, these sort of third-rate Z-listers, who've been on one little reality show, and they sort of tart themselves up, you know, with their l very latest creations, which they get from, I don't know, charity jobs, I suppose. And then they sort of turn up and they go, oh, because people are taking my photo, I'm a star. No, you're a disaster, I'm afraid, especially in her case as well. Uh, LBC Snow? No, it's not. It's sunny and clear. Depends where it is, actually. Obviously not here. New series of the Super Vet starts tonight, Channel 4 at 8pm. I can't watch bits of it where he starts rearranging animals' legs and things like that. He's very good, though, isn't he? He's very, he knows what he's doing, as you can, uh, as you can tell. Did you ever meet David Nixon? Uh, no. No, I think he died before I sort of came along, really. Or before I sort of, you know, was old enough. But, uh, no, I knew his uh, producer, uh, Ali Bongo, and, um... And I did see his shows on the television. I've seen the shows. In fact, actually, the very first magic set that I got was the David Nixon magic set. Uh, and a few copies of which still turn up at Magic Circle auctions. I keep meaning to buy one. I think, what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? It's cardboard sprayed with, with glitter. But now I'll bring back some memories. Oh, dear me. Mm. Mm. Uh, I enjoy listening to your show in the evening in Mexico City, says Ian, before I go to bed. I love your sarcasm and light-heartedness. Yes, I think most people like a bit of sarcasm. What, what I tend to, uh, to tell people is the truth. You know, it's, it's only those sort of moaning old Mary trolls who sort of go, oh, why do you only criticise people? You think, well, you know, if I'm like you, that's all you do. You just criticise people as well. The difference is I get well paid for it, you get paid nothing. Nothing at all. And that's why people are jealous. That's why Mary in Salisbury is a troll. She doesn't know she's a troll because she's not bright enough to know that. But that's exactly what she is. She's written a letter to somebody criticising them. That's trolling. That's trolling. I and mean, if I wanted to, I could probably go to the police over it and probably have some sort of case, you know, eventually. But never mind, I'm sure we'll... I'm sure she's sort of sitting at home at the moment going, yeah, 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 yeah. Round a, round a fire with three other people cackling away. Doddy is tickled to be going home, Ken Dodd. You know, I look ill, though. <laughs> I've seen the picture in the paper. He doesn't look... I know he's 90, but some people for 90 look brilliant. And uh, he doesn't look... He doesn't look brilliant, actually. And... Um, Steve, the G-spot's certainly not a myth. That's said by men who can't be bothered to find it. No, this is a, a female survey. Female survey. Steve, the Steph class war was continued in last night's Evening Standard. I read it. Laura Weir, the Standard's fashion editor, reckons we're obsessed with correct English. 
I don't, I don't, I don't quite understand this class war. I don't understand why, if you sound common and you're brought up on a council estate, you get less money. Because, is she like, well, unhappy? Well, unhappy. <laughs> I'll tell you what I watched the other day. I watched, who's that woman who did The Midwife? That comedian, uh, Miranda Hart. She was doing her comedy show in an arena. I kid you not, I'd have asked for my money back. Because she's, she's not that funny. She's really not that funny. I couldn't believe. And as far as the eye could see, this arena was heaving with Pete. And I remember thinking, how much has she met? There was nothing on the stage apart from some packets of crisps and a table and a backdrop, which was, you know, at one point it moved and that was about... And I remember thinking, my God, she can't do many of those because it just wasn't outstanding. Whereas Michael McIntyre is outstanding and all the other comics, you know, the ones who play things like that. Then I watched uh, a bit of Sunday Night at the London Palladium and they had that Simon Bodkin comedian on. The one who, Brodkin, sorry, the one, I don't even know his name, Lee Nelson, does a bit, called a, kind of talked like that kind of thing. And he came on as another sort of act. I think he called himself Lee something, but it certainly wasn't Mr Brodkin. And uh, he was, you know, funny in bits. It wasn't really that funny. It wasn't really that funny. But uh, they're Josh Groban on, with a fantastic voice, really fantastic voice. Uh, some of the stories uh, which are making the, uh, the papers today, Sam decided to end their friendship this is Sam for ears, who fell out with Fern McCann over her decision to maintain a relationship with Arthur Collins after the acid attack sentencing. Yeah, someone I wouldn't trust Fern McCann as far as I could throw her, I'm afraid. I really wouldn't. I always found it very odd that when she went in the house, she didn't smell cannabis. I always found that, you know, bizarre in the extreme. I was never sure whether I believed her. You know, so you didn't know about his reputation. You didn't know about the fact he was having hair transplants. And you didn't know about the fact he was a nasty little thug. But there you go, I'm afraid. Fern McCann has made her bed and she'll have to lie in it. That's her business. Uh, Steve, when you spoke about Monica Lewinsky, I wanted to light up a cigar, says Adam. I know. There's just that there's a picture. The only reason I mentioned her is because there's a picture in one of the papers today and one of the female columnists, Sarah Vine, I think, is saying, you know, we think the lady doth protesteth too much because there's a picture of her flinging her arms around Bill Clinton's neck, you know. And this is supposed to be somebody going, oh, hashtag me too. Maybe not, dear. Maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, Steve, I've got to get from Lewisham to Stansted Airport for a flight to the auntie's funeral. Can you, any of your listeners tell us, says Kate, what the roads are like? The A12, M11? I don't know, actually. I don't know. I should imagine somebody, somebody could come back. Put it this way, there is, is it still snowing here? It really? Oh, I can't wait for an ad. Oh, we've got an ad break now. I've got three minutes to go and have a look at snow. I think that's so exciting. Starting. It's so exciting. Drenched. In Leicester Square, dredge is coming down seriously, like, like coming down, like a lot of snow. Warren's over in Newark. He says it's 13 degrees. He said, uh, "I hear it's cold there. Any snow round here? Unbelievable at the moment. It is snowing badly in Leicester Square, which means that all the surrounding roads will be very slippy, slidey, because there won't be much traffic at this time of the morning. So uh, take it easy out there." And as uh, somebody wrote to me a minute ago, Johnny. He says, I hope the morons who've just overtaken me at 40 miles an hour on the Blackwall Tunnel approach in Greenwich, despite the heavy snow, only go on to cause themselves serious damage. Yeah, it's just, uh, I mean, it is, it's, it's chucking it down here. Absolutely, I'm so glad I brought a hat, but I didn't bring an umbrella. Never mind. Uh, Steve, uh, I'm going from Catford to Stansted. I think the texter needs to ask his aunt if she can postpone her funeral. <laughs> Michelle said, there's no snow in, snow in Stansted. It's coming your way. And uh, glad to hear you talk about snow in inches. BBC used centimetres. I don't recall the day the UK went decimal in measurements. Really? I think we've been decimal for some years, actually. <laughs> and uh, another one here says, uh, snowing in Hounslow. Thank you. Uh, also, it's uh, Thailand, 29 degrees, which is good. And somebody says, I hope you well. I bought the Miranda O2 DVD in the pound shop. I watched it and gave it away. It was rubbish, says Paul. Well, I, I didn't think she was up to doing an arena. Do you know what I mean? And uh, flight time across, fastest I've ever known, says Warren. Jet stream of 200 miles an hour, 6.3 hours. Very fast. That's very fast. Stuart Manning says it's, uh, it's all white out his way. I think, is it all white out your way? I can't. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I've got to find these things. Sometimes things vanish before my eyes. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Now I've got to find where I've, where I've put Stuart Manning's tweets and texts. I never find some of these things. And every time I go to... Oh, there we go. Stuart says, the roads are perfect this morning. 
So he said, enjoy the snow. I don't think I'm going to enjoy the snow. I mean, it really is chucking it down a lot. I mean, it really is chucking it down a lot around here at the moment. But anyway, Stuart. Right, 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 right. What do we got here? It says, um, no snow in Stansted. Actually, that's good news if there's no snow in Stansted. That means that the flights won't, uh, won't go anywhere. Uh, M25 and M1, no snow, says Stuart. He's my man officially in charge of... Uh, of uh, finding out whether it's good, bad or indifferent. You see that Lee Mead has found a girlfriend after about three years. That's good. I'm pleased for him. He met her at the school gate. She's not a pupil. She's, uh, she's the mother of one of the, uh, one of the people there. Uh, Warren says it's not supposed to snow there today, is it? Apparently the blizzards are on Friday. Huh? Look out my window. I thought it was just a little bit. You know, when the producer said it's snowing in Leicester Square, and I went, yeah, 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 yeah. And then we looked out the window, and then we had a look at it, and it's coming down like bilio. It really is. Not much fun for anybody. Not much fun for anybody at all. But it's nice to have a company. I'm Steve Allen. And uh, we don't do any more apologies. We just say, well, I'm Steve Allen. This is early breakfast. This is LBC. This is where you get all the answers to every single question. We enjoyed our talk the other day about uh, old department stores which was very good and uh, country houses because alan titchmarsh's show started last night uh, this morning everybody's talking about the lockdown in the country because i mean we don't have it very bad in london you know it might be bad for london to go oh i can't believe snow there will be people waking up who've never seen snow I've only ever seen it on a picture postcard but uh, nevertheless here it is you'll look out of your hotel window this morning and you'll see a blanket of snow and it makes everything look very pretty and very clean and very nice Somebody said to me earlier on, you smell like, what did they say? You smell like fresh laundry. I've made a note of her name. She's, she's going to HR straight away. <laughs> Downright harassment, I think. Uh, so, well, John's mum who died didn't leave him any money. She had about £500,000 to leave and didn't leave, I mean, he's got millions. Why would she leave him any money? She left it to people she wanted to leave it to. They hadn't spoken for ages and ages. And uh, so it was quite right that she left it. Uh, so her, your mum say the papers gave you a rocket man okay that was all, all the old gags i still think that's one of the best ones actually don't let the sun get a dime from me i mean that's such a clever play nobody will understand it but it's very clever actually panic buyers fighting over milk oh dear what is going on in the world we had people the other day a little bit of snow comes down they start stockpiling food like you know it's dreadful uh robert williams he's a, a popsicle singer he says, I've got a disease in my head, it wants to kill me. He's digging up the house again, he wants to. He's going to ignite this uh, feud that he's got with Robert Plant. And uh, the, uh, the feud is that Robbie wants to do... Sorry, Robert wants to do something to the house. And Robert Plant, I think, is trying to stop it. And the neighbours are not happy about it. It's, still, it's all just gone a bit pear-shaped, you know, as it, all these things do, actually. Uh, Warren says, Steve Allen Show gives all the answers to all the questions... Are you in competition with James? Nobody. He offered to buy me a curry. Yet another one going to HR. He offered to buy me a green curry. He was going out the front door with his producer, Beth. And, um, and he said, I'm going to get a green curry. Do you want a green curry? I went, I don't think so, no. I had to think about it for a while. I went, no, no, really, I'm not interested. Which was good. Jane Moore today in her column says, uh, news that former One Direction star Liam Payne and girlfriend Cheryl Tweedledee Cole Fernandez Versace are selling their LA home. Well, actually, it's not theirs, it's his. She doesn't have that sort of money. Uh, has added grist to the rumour mill that their relationship has hit a rough patch. A source says the problem stems from Cheryl being stuck at home with their baby son, Bear, whilst Liam has to go away all the time because of his work. Understandable, though. Those parcels just won't deliver themselves because he's wearing that, you know, that ZHL thing. Z DHL, sorry. But uh, I love the way that sort of Cheryl stuck at home with the baby. Obviously, the baby's a bit of an inconvenience, I suppose, for her. Uh, why I? Because I'm worth it. So we had sex and I've had Babby. And, um, and now I'm stuck at home with it. Well, he managed to go out the other night, dear. So presumably it's, it's all doable. It's more interesting that the, um, the record company might drop you because you've not had a hit since about 20... 14 i think it's either 2014 or 20 whatever it is a long time ago and i think she barely scraped into the top 100 so that means that your fans have deserted you and uh you know it's it's not good is it really once your fans go you're a little bit a uh, little bit done in keith says snowing heavily at uh, shenfield in s68 12 would be very difficult and johnny says tell the lady going from lewisham to stansted allow minimum two hours it's normally an hour. The first 20 miles will be tricky. And he knows. He knows these things. So 
take his word for it. I went for a walk in the countryside, says CJ, as the heavy snow came in. Gave way to the sunshine, glittering brightly. It was bizarre, because it felt warm again, apart from my very wet feet. My feet were like blocks of ice yesterday when I came in here. Good thing about the weather, uh, says Annie, it's absolutely beautiful to look at, especially under a microscope. Lovely to be a kid again. Lastly, it stops people from being nosy. Waiting for snow in East London. I, w I was reading a tweet earlier on from somebody. It was very funny, actually. And it was... <laughs> I can't actually read out all the words on it, but it's, it's a very funny one. And it would appeal to... Uh, oh, uh, the thick snow in Steeple, Essex, says Yvonne. Thank you. Uh, where was this thing? I can't find it. It's, um, it's about a bloke uh, called Philip. And he says, I just spotted a cat on somebody's porch, meowing to be let in. Without thinking, I went up to the door, rang the bell, nodded to the cat and left. It was only as I rounded the corner I realised what I'd done as I heard the owner shouting, Blow me, Sarah, the cat just rang the doorbell. I had to change some of the words, actually, on that one to make it more, more readable. But you can imagine, can't you? You, know, the, you open the, you know, the doorbell rings, you go outside and there's the cat sitting, you go... Well, who's done that? The cat's rung the doorbell. I've seen cats get in, you know, where they pull on the handle and stuff like that, but this one rings a doorbell. Good, isn't it? I like that. I like that a lot. It made me smile. Bernie's a dwarf. His ex is Lady Macbeth. Petra's had a lobotomy. This is uh, James Stunt, a rather peculiar little creature, honestly. Uh, uh, never actually blessed with looks. Little short, fat bloke has just decided to be very rude about the Ecclestons. I don't know why. Bernie's a dwarf. As Bernie says, you know, I can't... I can't actually do anything about my height. And uh, Bernie says, I feel sorry for him. He's destroyed his own life. Yeah, he's a rather, he's a rather naff person. <laughs> I don't think anybody bothers with him. He suffers from, from delusions. And uh, there you go. If he hadn't married her, he probably, you know, would be still toodling around doing whatever. But, uh, you know, I mean, fancy calling Bernie a dwarf. I mean, that's not that's unfair, isn't it, really? He's just not blessed. He's only five foot three. He's only five foot three. Uh, jail officer quits after a fling with a lag, the taming of the screw. Here she is, mum of two. Tina Hamilton resigned during a probe into claims that she'd fallen for a burglar behind bars. Oh, dear, you can't even trust blooming screws now, can you? All having affairs all over the place. And uh, I've got a lyrics quiz for you this morning. Got a lyrics quiz. So what's that song again? Common questions about tunes stuck in my head. Let's just try it on the producer, because he likes words. I know, you're going to fail miserably. Oh, did you? Son, I'm 30. I only went with your mother because she's dirty. I don't know. Not even have a guess, are you, really? Just, you just decided to resign yourself. I could tell you that it's uh, Kinky Afro. Happy Mondays. Didn't mean a thing to... I don't even know what Happy... I've heard of Happy Mondays, but uh, I'm going to give you one more. Um. Uh, oh dear, Jesus died for somebody's sins, but not mine. Gee, my brother does quizzes like this, they're really annoying. <laughs> and that one is, uh, believe it or not, uh, Gloria by Patti Smith. I mean, they're, they're obscure, aren't they? Why can't we have something from the Beatles? I am the son and the heir of a shyness that is criminally vulgar. And this is, how soon is now the Smiths? They're rubbish. I'm not doing those any. I'm not even doing them because I'm uh, because I've never heard of after. I've heard of the groups. I've never heard of the songs. Uh, the is it all over for Cheryl is in the bizarre column today. Dan's obviously decided that as Cheryl was rude to him, he's going to take it out on her in the column, and it works quite well really because she said to him, you know, how dare you ask about all this kind of thing? Listen, madam, okay, just sit back on your sort of unemployed couch and watch television and try and forget that you're in show business, okay? Because you're not. Makes it so much easier that way. LBC News Time. It's 4.30 with the late... ...through Friday. Steve the Milkman says, snowing in Muswell Hill, there's something very therapeutic about walking and driving on the very first fall of snow in the morning. The good folk of Muswell Hill might have the milk a little bit later today, but I shall do my best. There is something about driving on virgin snow, isn't there? There is something. Dom... Uh, says, uh, love the show. It's near Whiteout in Felixstowe this morning. Is it still snowing here? Is it still coming down? Is, uh, we sort of eased off a little bit. A little bit... Uh, eased off a little bit. Still quite heavy. There you go. Might, we might actually lose the bus this morning. That'll be the interesting one, won't it? Can't wait to see us going round a corner. But actually, the road should be OK. The road should be OK. Snow's landed in Burheath, Tadworth. Just opened the front door. Stuck in today. Was meant to get to the doctors at nine o'clock. Won't get the car down the slope, says Pat. 
Uh, not really, no, I wouldn't risk it. Easier to wait till it's all thawed out. Uh, Gary says, in the last two hours, we've had two inches in Dagenham. I've just finished work, so tonight should be, uh, should be fun. All white in Sidcup, says Charlotte. All white. And I have my dog out for a walk. Feltham is covered in snow. Looks very pretty. I'm off to Berlin tomorrow for, for the weekend. It's minus 11 out there. But they've not come to a standstill, says Joe. <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't guarantee it. We're terrible, aren't we? Why can't we cope with things like the, uh, the snow? Lots of snow in Twickenham, says Max, thank you, thankfully. And, uh, and Peter says, hopefully the snow will fill in the potholes in West London and make the roads less humpy. And, uh, and Jenny says, thank you for your opinion, Miranda Hart. I thought I was alone in thinking she was useless. No, I don't think she was useless. I just, I just didn't think it was very funny. You know, as, as a small little gag, it might have been. And uh, then she was talking about breaking wind. And, uh, and that, that sort of dragged on a little bit too much. And then she belched and then sort of paused for laughter. I mean, I, I just didn't think it was, it was um, stuff that was destined for an arena. I, just, I mean, I just really... Does that make me... Uh, does that make me sort of somebody who doesn't find certain people funny? Because I, I just don't. But there again, we're not supposed to, are we? Sometimes I've met somebody and they're actually funnier than I thought they were going to be. Uh, Steve, I've always wondered how some entertainers remain popular despite their lack of talent. I know. And uh, Paul says, you just said all questions answered. Who's Billy O? Billy Ocean. Billy Ocean is Billy O. Isn't it? I would think so. Love really hurts without you. Keep the lyrics going, says Kevin the Millman. I got all of them. Oh, you would, wouldn't you? I can't believe you just said that. <laughs> uh, Christopher Golds has just driven in from... Where's he driven in from? He's, he's obviously driven... Oh, wait a minute. I shall find you in a moment, Chris. Don't, don't worry, it's my, my phone playing silly beggars. Just driven in from Hearn Hill. Now in Westminster, he says... Um, Oh, where's it gone to? He says, I can't imagine one road I've been on has ever been gritted. Even Whitehall, which I'm on now, is covered in snow. Lordy, you be careful. You be careful. It's it's a bit uh, it's a bit squidgy-widgy out there, isn't it? You don't want to be sliding about all over the place. But as I say, there will be people driving, Chris, you know, who've never seen snow before. Mainly Uber drivers. And they'll be sort of driving, and they'll be skidding, they'll be, you know, coming up to traffic lights. It'll be, oh, it'll be a nightmare. Nightmare out there, so expect accidents. Try and keep away from the car in front, because if it breaks suddenly, you're going to slip slide straight into the back of it. Hmm. I'll have a quick slurp. But once I start on water, I'm fatal. I found a bottle of water the other side. I knew it was fresh, because it, it hadn't been, uh, hadn't been opened before. Uh, so, Kevin knows all of the, the lyrics. Trust you trust you to know that <laughs> he says and a couple of inches of that horrid white stuff in bermondsey heading back over to the city soon hope it's not snowed there well it's chucked it down around here chucked it down and because it's cold i don't think it's going anywhere at the moment uh, dominic says look like the fame hungry low rent big house the co eccleson sisters are going to get their comeuppance in the press looks like the mother is just as vile as the ugly sisters can't wait to hear all the dirty secrets and just how vile they are oh i don't know Oh, I was quite surprised that Mr Stunt decided to say that. He's a rather peculiar little bit. Mind you, I think the whole lot of them are peculiar. I, I wouldn't give you a threepence for any of them at all. And I'm sure that they've all got little secrets. Don't you reckon? Don't you reckon? Uh, do you drive your car during this adverse weather or do you prefer public transport, says CJ? I prefer a private vehicle. I, uh, I have been known uh, on odd occasions to get a bus... Uh, I, I now get the bus. I used to get a car to take me to the hospital. Now I take the bus. It's a, it's a fairly lengthy journey, but I, I manage it just about. I've got to do it uh, tomorrow because I've had a, a, a slight little problem with the, uh, with the stitches. But uh, that'll, sort it. that'll be all sorted out, which is good news. So, no snow in Guildford, says Anne. Marilyn says, why don't you get a milkman? I think we do have a, a milkman. I think, I think we do have a milkman, and it, and it, it delivers loads of stuff. Because in a building this size, with the amount of people we've got, and each fridge has got, I don't know how much, 20 pints in it, something like that? Something, yeah. Which sort of, so, and there's uh, kitchens on every floor, and there's nine floors, so there must be, there's at least nine kitchens. At least nine kitchens. Uh, a friend of mine says, uh, got up early to make a massive cup of tea. Massive cup of tea is always is always my idea of bliss. I like a massive cup of tea, or at least have two cups of tea. And oh, it is huge, isn't it? Uh, in my vintage BOAC mug, already had a shower and gone back to bed for a warm. 
I've done that before. I've got up, had a cup of tea, lay down on the settee and dozed off again. Bliss. It's bliss. You'll do it this morning. I like the BOAC mug. I think that, that's quite nice. <laughs> this, this friend of mine is as mad as a fruitcake, I promise you. He takes <laughs> pictures of all sorts of the oddest things. The oddest things. It always makes me smile. <laughs> Be careful out there. It's, uh, it's slippy slidey. We don't want any, uh, any disasters. The Dartford Crossing in Essex is jammed, says Mark. And uh, a lot of people tell you about Toys R Us and Maplin on the brink of bankruptcy. Uh, yeah, they were looking for a buyer, uh, I think up until last night, for Toys R Us, because they've got a tax bill of 15 million, so they're looking to get that paid. And uh, Maplin's, uh, why don't people go there now? Um, because they can go online and get it quicker and easier. Although I used to love wandering around Maplin's. There's a big one down just by Waterloo Bridge, just on the, the corner there on the Strand. And uh, I, just, I don't like the aggressive salesmanship. You know when you walk into somewhere, you just want to look. I just want to look around. And you get, oh, can I help you? Can I help you? Can I help you? It's a bit like going to McDonald's. It's a similar kind of mentality. It doesn't quite do it for me. Uh, I understand now, says John, why Kim Wilde says she believes in UFOs. She's promoting her new tour. What's it called? Here comes the aliens. Am I being too cynical? We're the kids in America. Whoa! <laughs> Still think it was a good song. Uh, does that Warren ever sleep? He messaged you yesterday morning. He's been on a flight to America and he's still messaging you. Does he ever sleep? No, he doesn't. He's a robot. He doesn't need sleep. He's one of those new robotic, you know, figures of a man and they don't sleep. They don't need to sleep. He's, he, he works for B.A. There's no chance he's ever going to sleep, the poor soul. <laughs> but you're right. I also think the same thing, but I've, I've tried not to think about it. Uh, what else have we got here? Steve, the missus has done nothing but stare through the blooming window since it started snowing, says Alan in Garstang. If it gets any heavier, I might have to let her in. <laughs> Such an old one. Excuse me again. Mm. Oh, dear. Dry as a bone this morning. Isn't that funny? You get sort of funny weather like this and I get dry as a bone. And I have my little bottle of water. Not every day, because you know me and water. It doesn't kind of work the same way. I am worried about Cheryl. You know, having sort of started, well, she thought to promote her album. She's got the pale face one from the, uh, from the group who's done some things. And apparently the fan has gone, ooh, all excited. And uh, now the record company fear the album will flop. And to be honest with you, I, I said that first time round. In fact, the moment she said, it's like Sarah Harding. Well, I'm going to go back into the studio. Please don't waste anybody's time. You're not going to sell any albums. Nobody is interested. Nobody's interested in Cheryl. The, little, the few little fans she had were very young. They've grown up now. They've, they've moved on. In fact, if anything, you, you, you could probably get the, uh, you know, the, uh, the Spice Girls back into the, into the groove. But Cheryl not. You know, I know she had some success, but only because she was on The X Factor. If this album bombs, it'll be because the fans have deserted and that will be the end of her musical career. So she'll have to either stick with L'Oreal, because she's worth it, uh, or she'll just have to find something else to do. I don't know what, actually. I don't know what else she could do. Moan, I suppose. She could, she could moan. I moan for a living. Um, just having a little check. Actually, uh, we're, we're still trying to work out... I don't know if you know the answer to this one. Do they have chicken in KFC? Or, or is, that, is that all finished again now? I don't know. Uh, the Black Cab Poet, Mr Dennis Michael. He says, I'm s currently sitting in my cab on the Clapham Common Rank, seriously considering going home. Discretion being the better part of valour and, uh, and all that, where the roads and other drivers are concerned. I have to be honest, I wouldn't want to be a black cab driver in weather like this. Take a couple of days off. You know, until it's, it's disappeared. Because otherwise, you know, you're going to slip slide around all over the place. You know, are people going to be looking for cabs? Probably. So you, you have to... Oh, it's a risky one, isn't it, really? I don't know what the, uh, what the answer is. Uh, Davy says, Sean Locke's a great comedian. We'll have you in stitches, guaranteed. I like Sean Locke. I like Sean Locke. I still like that one from Alan. The missus had done nothing but stare through the blooming window since it started snowing. If it gets any heavier, I might have to let her in. I think that's because we've all got an image in our mind of what she looks like, haven't we? She's there at the window. Let me in. Let me in now. It's almost as good as the cat and the doorbell. <laughs> I don't know. We, 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 we talk about odd things like that in the morning. I hope Toys R Us don't go under, but I have a feeling it's, it's, it's not looking promising, is it? And if it doesn't look promising uh, from where I'm sitting, it must be even worse where you're sitting. No snow in uh, Charlbury in Oxfordshire. Mind you, we just need a couple of inches for us to be cut off, says Debbie. Just passing Stansted, says Julian. Just started to snow. 
just what you need. And um, and Warren says, you can tell that lady, I don't sleep. There you go, you see. I don't sleep. That's what he says. I don't sleep. Uh, he says, I am a robot. Actually, Robin used to call me the Duracell bunny. He said, he, if, you, if you open the back, take the batteries out, you'll see the wheels running. <laughs> There's probably a joke there as well, which I can't, uh, I can't do as well. Here in Romford, Steve, uh, we have a big inch as opposed to a standard one. Of course, snowing in Walthamstow, day off today, listening to your show and, and smoking, says Ben. Lovely. Can't, uh, can't endorse that, as you can well imagine, unless you're very ill. No snow in Milton Keynes, says Bill. Well, well, would you know? Would you know the difference? Chucking down in Frinton, says Bobby B., and uh, somebody else has said here, da, 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 no snow, Milton Keynes. My son's girlfriend is Taiwanese, and yesterday was the first time she'd seen snow. She was amazed. Yeah, there would be loads of people listening who had never seen snow. You know, people who they get what you know. Oh, doesn't it look pretty? It looks like a a picture postcard. And uh, but uh, Elaine says, always happy to hear your show in the morning. Thank you. It's nice. Nice thing to say. And uh, from one here, says, just walked out my front door in Hawkshurst in Kent, drove to the end of the road, and trust me, I had to park up, as it's far worse than yesterday. That good old Christmas postcard effect. Yes, I mean, if, if, you, if you seriously think it's too dangerous to drive, please don't drive. That would be my advice. Uh, Steve, the answer to the chicken in KFC, I'm a fire suppression engineer. I've just finished a job in KFC Denham, and the chicken was all good. Shame I can't say anything about the A13, really bad roughly three inches of snow and no salt gritted, says Scott in Dagenham actually strange enough, Jim Diamond who will be uh, on our uh, AM frequency in about a couple of hours time, he was just saying he came in, he said, uh, it's about three inches of snow all over the roads, he said, it doesn't appear as though they've been gritted he said, so the cab that he was in was sliding about a little bit, oh dear that means the buses will be going very slow this morning very slow, so the, the idea is well, the answer is leave a bit earlier. In fact, leave quite a bit earlier. But better to be early and get there in one piece than try and madly dash through. A friend of mine is very, very bad at sort of getting into work just on the, on the hour kind of thing. You know, you need to leave a bit earlier this morning, so I don't want any accidents. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, first proper snow of the winter in Dundee. Loving it. I said, I don't have to work in the morning, says Ian. Uh, loads of snow in Glossop in Derbyshire. Kim Wilde was a very keen gardener, says Dallas. I wonder if she'll find any fairies... At the bottom of her garden. I don't know, actually. I just know the kids in America. <laughs> That's all I know. And um, I noticed uh, in a KFC window yesterday, says, Paul, we're open, but with a reduced menu. And Francis uh, squealed with excitement on seeing the snow outside, which is good. As long as you enjoy it. As long as you enjoy the snow. It's great. We don't have to go anywhere. As kids, we, we loved it to pieces. Snowing in wood green. People taking video already, says Carol. Well, you must, because once it vanishes, it vanishes. Doesn't it? Although we've got Friday to go yet and Thursday. Uh, Steve, my husband, is crazy. He's sleeping on top of the bed covers, says Eve. It's blooming freezing. Uh, how about new series of Benidorm starting tonight on 9pm on ITV? And somebody says, um, how about becoming a care worker for Cheryl? Oh, no, she's in show business. Well, she thinks she's in show business. She couldn't do anything like that. And I certainly wouldn't want to hear her singing. Thank you very much indeed. Re high pressure salesman. I went to a dream store recently and the salesman, salesman wouldn't leave me alone. I nearly resorted to hiding under one of the duvets, says CJ. <laughs> I love it really. I mean, you've got to give them, that's how they make their money, isn't it, salesmen? That's how they make their money. So, um, the Spice Girls invited to Meghan Harry's wedding, says Mel B. Um, the thrilled singer confirmed it in an interview on a US chat show. She was asked if she knew anyone who had been at the wedding. She said, yeah, I'm going. Us five Spice Girls. The interviewer then pressed her about what the official invitation looked like. Mel described it as proper before adding, I'm not saying any more. I've said enough. Well, you're right. You have said enough because you've said you've been invited. And she also remained coy about whether she would be singing uh, at the nuptials. Oh, dear. A Spice Sauce told the son there are currently no plans for them to perform at the event. In fact, that's all we hear about the Spice Girls. There's no plans for them to perform, full stop. But I don't think they'll be singing. I mean, what, what would they do? Sort of burst out of the, um, the sort of the choir stalls in St George's Chapel and start singing, I'll tell you what you want, what you really... I mean, that would just that would be just awful, wouldn't it? <laughs> it's, it's great for people, you know, um, who, who love that kind of thing. I've been sitting 
says Nigel, for three hours at Felixstowe Docks in my truck. At least we got you on the radio. Well, that is good. I'm always amazed you can pick us up down there. As a police officer, can I ask for people to drive safely, says Tom. Don't be afraid to turn the heating on. If you know any older people, just make sure they're OK. Stay safe. Yes, I've always said, turn the heating on. Well, in the car, I have it on anyway. It doesn't make any difference. In the middle of summer, of course, I have the air conditioning on. In winter, we put on the heating. And sometimes you sit and think, God, it's hot. Uh, Gritters are for ice. No need snow plows, says uh, Charlotte. Uh, Gritters and salt can't stop snow. It melts it. It melts it. It does melt it. And um, that's what you have to do. That's what you have to do. But they should have been out there doing this. They should have been gritting the roads earlier on. Because it's uh, it's not a case of snow plow. We don't, we have, I've never seen a snow plow in London, believe you me. You might have them out in the countryside, but in London that would be a bit stupid to sort of drive a snow plow. We don't have that much snow here. We've got snow at the moment, which is outside, which is lovely. Well, it looked lovely a minute ago. I can't wait. I should be nipping out there in a second to have another look. I'm just in one of those annoying moods this morning. Um, 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 Daily Mirror, front page. Uh, Britain hit by the big freeze. And uh, the sad story that four people died the other day after the beast from the east unleashed chaos on the UK. Uh, because you just have to remember, snow is dangerous. It can be very dangerous. Also, end the scourge of knife deaths. It's almost on a regular basis. It's, uh, it's gangs and it's people who go out with knives and they are prepared to kill. They don't, they don't think there's anything the matter with it at all. They really don't. It's, I just find it absolutely amazing that, you know, mothers sort of wake up to the knock on the door from the police saying, your son's just been knifed to death. And they always go, he was such a good boy, you think, he was quite clearly running with a gang. That's what it is. Uh, signs that your body is trying to tell you something. You know, we all know, you know when you feel ill, or you don't feel 100%, or you've got a cough, or a cold, or a sniffle, or feeling that your legs ache, and you go, oh, I could just... If there was a bed here now, you know, <laughs> that's that situation. You think, if there was a bed, and, and somebody, and it rolled in through the wall, and, and all of a sudden the sheets got pulled back, and then you could just sort of, like, oh, you'd be out for the count! Out for the count, you'd love every minute of it because so you do have some mornings, especially in this weather when it's a bit uh, a bit chilly and a bit mizzy. The idea is if you haven't got any heating, you've got to get up and out of bed as quick as possible. I've lived in bed sits, believe you me. It, it was the one thing guaranteed to get you out of bed. You didn't want to get out of bed. But once you were out of bed, by God, you scooted across the floor very quickly. Um, 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 Petra Eccleston's ex-husband, James Stunt, a rather silly little creature has branded his former wife a horrible human being and his father, Bernie, a dwarf following their bitter divorce. I mean, to be honest with you, they all deserve what they get. They all deserve what they get. I mean, I couldn't really care less. It makes it funny, but not really that funny unless you're there. Uh, <laughs> Warren is going to bed now. You'll be delighted to know he's actually decided to sleep, which is uh, good. And uh, here we go, because it's the... Lon oh, not this Sunday. It's the London Half Marathon. Don't tell me they're closing roads in London again, please. I can't bear it. Morning, says a friend of mine from my supplements team. And uh, we've got, what have we got here? Let's have a look. We've got Primrose Oil, uh, Omega 3. Good Lord, honestly, it's supplements all the way through, isn't it, nowadays? So, I mean, I don't do any of these sort of things. Probably if I did, I'd be doing the London Half Marathon. Where does that run to? Where does it run to and is it going to affect me? parking but i bet it is i could just i could just tell i love to park miles away as usual <laughs> i always complain about it i don't complain about the marathon i just complain about the fact it's in london when people need to come into work i'm sure the producer will find out the uh oh does it goes along the strand oh right from where trafalgar square will be shut okay so we understand that charing cross road might not be uh, what about Pall Mall? Would that be closed, Pall Mall? Yeah, oh, that's the start of it, is it? Oh, riveting. So there you go. So, uh, that's another disruptive day. It's all right for people who are running, but what about all the people who have to work? 99? I'm only 85. It's an ice cream man, and, uh, they say he's the longest-serving ice cream man. He still only sells vanilla. Well, that's good for him. His name is Frank Penner. He refuses to give up the family tradition of selling only one flavour. He says, nobody ever seems disappointed when I say we've only got the one. I've sold ice cream since 1946. They were a penny, tuppence and threepence, cornets. I've seen the same families coming back over the years. <gasps> My grandmother used to tell us about the hokey-pokey man. 
that was the Italian bloke who came around hokey pokey being ice cream and uh, he had it in his little sort of tub in front of him because it was quite a rarity ice cream you know in the early days when people had it it was like oh blimey it was like drinking chocolate hot chocolate and tea were very rare very very you went to somebody's house and they had tea bloody hell that was amazing oh apologies uh but uh, so only vanilla oh, you don't need anything else do you, you only want vanilla you don't need anything else you don't need all these and he also he does hard ice cream not squirty squirty out of the you know pull the handle down thing um the moment a dad made holly and phil weep this is simon thomas who uh, looked into his son's eyes and says, I'm sorry, Ethan, mum's died. And uh, both of them are sort of uh, family people. That's Holly and uh, Phil. And it was very, I watched it back, actually. It's very emotional. Very, although Simon actually is very good at just being able to talk about it, because that's what you can do. If it's happened to you, you can talk about it. And, uh, and it's, it's OK, because it's therapeutic. Uh, coming up very shortly, the news at five o'clock, uh, just in case you've just woken up, we have snow in London. Leicester Square is under, oh, God knows, we're miles of it, miles of it. Uh, 122 quid a week to put a toddler through nursery. Hollywood legend Stan Laurel had a partner before Oliver Hardy. He was called Ted Desmond. The mystery buyer who paid a fortune for the missing peer's stash. Elton's mum, who died, left him nothing. Um, the couple who'd been wed for five years, he taped her cheating and was done for stalking. Unbelievable! Unbelievable! Why a dip in the sea could make you ill and stairways to hell. Neighbour Jimmy Page and Robert Williams reignite their feud. All of that time. It's Steve Allen's early breakfast. It's LBC. We've had snow in London. We had it yesterday. Very pretty it was too. We went, oh look, snow. And we had snow this morning and it's been heavy. It's still snowing but it's not as heavy as it was. But because it's chilly, it's settled. The buses are still running. Joanne's had a, a quick check on that one, so uh, we will keep you up to date with the travel. So if you're one of those people who relies very much on LBC's travel service, uh, quarter past this morning will be the first one, and uh, we'll let you know what the state of the roads is. I'm training, says Nicola, for the Brighton Marathon, and Whetstone is thick in snow, debating whether or not to run this morning. Well, just be careful. Just be careful. Uh, Gail says, will you be building a snowman? We're going to build a snowman. <laughs> I can't remember what the rest of the song is. I think it was from Frozen, wasn't it? All deep and crisp and even on the outskirts of Brighton. Leftover snowfall from yesterday, but a brilliant shiny moon reflecting off the snow. Stunning snow moon shadows. It's very pretty, isn't it? Uh, uh, ban throwing snowballs, far too dangerous, says Steve. Well, they did in one school. They've, they've called the headmaster a snowflake, as you can well imagine. Um, somebody else says, talking of Kim Wilde, I saw a film the other day. Uh, from 63, called What a Crazy World with Marty Wilde and Joe Brown. Both still touring in 2018, says Nigel. I flew, says uh, Monica, for BA for 25 years. Gave up 15 years ago. Still can't sleep. <laughs> thank goodness for your show. Yes, you're right, actually. I, th I think, thank goodness for my show. That's what people always say, isn't it? They say, I wake up in the morning. And if you're, if you're one of those people who finds it really difficult to sleep... This is the ideal program, not to not to help you sleep, but try and make you forget about the fact that you're not sleeping. Uh, Mike and Mark, um, still in Key West. They got 31 degrees the other day and a low of 24 at night. Jealous yet? No, no, I'm not. I, I don't do heat. I really. Do. You could no more impress me by saying that you were, you know, on the middle of a roller coaster in the heat. It just doesn't interest me in the slightest. It just makes me uncomfortable. So I'm thinking about going to Vegas later in the year, which I probably will with some friends. And uh, the heat, I'm all right in the hotels. It's when I walk out on the street that I melt. You know, I'm just, I'm one of those sort of people. It's terrible. Uh, Steve, um, a digit's worth of snow in picturesque Pratt's Bottom. Southeastern commuters will need to check travel arrangements. Uh, Northerners will need a big coat. Part of the 4am Spikers Club. We're here to help. Yeah, so just be just be careful. Do check, do check. But we'll we'll try and bring you up to up to speed with uh, all the problems that the snow will bring. And it does bring problems. You know why? Because we don't get it very often. And when we do get it, they then go, ah, we're not really. You know, we we know what snow is. We just don't don't know how to cope with it. So it all it all collapses, and uh, it's it's just um, just a bit of a pain, really, isn't it? I mean, later this morning, I think uh, Nick Ferrari. Uh, we'll be finding out if the Germans are as bad as us. I think they're not. I think they're much more... Well, you talk about the snow coverage. I think they're more... I think they're super efficient. 
they can handle disruption. It's it's done with German mentality. They don't. Whereas we all go, ah, I can't cope with it. And, you know, and you look at you know pictures of the motorway. The motorways generally, as long as cars have been travelling on them, then they'll be relatively clear. But there are other motorways where once it grinds to a halt and uh, lorries get bogged down in it because the wheels spin, then the cars get caught behind them. Before you know where you are, nothing's moving. And then you get sort of people, you know, how long have you been sitting here now? We've been here for five hours, four hours. And then they do what? Yes, and then you get one person who tries to speed. But you look at the snow when it comes, I think it's really pretty. As I say, I can say that sitting in here. If I was out in it, I wouldn't be thinking the same thing. I'll have to wait and see what it's like when we leave the building this, uh, this morning. It's all I need, isn't it, honestly? Trying to cross the road down here in London. <laughs> trying to get to the bus. Mind you, I think the roads should be clear. I'm hoping they'll be clear. I don't want to, don't, because we have to turn a very sharp corner in our bus. And yesterday it was a bit touch and go as to whether or not we were going to make it. He was hooting, or she was... I think it was a woman, wasn't it? She was... It was a man, was it? He was hooting at this, uh, this bicycle, uh, which I thought was quite interesting. But anyway, uh, also in the paper today, uh, Queen going green could harm wildlife... Uh, because she plans to build a hydro station at Balmoral. And they're going, well, we're not sure about that. Not sure about that. Here's a little picture of, who is that? Oh, it's Michelle Keegan again. Because um, she says that she, uh, filming in South Africa, uh, makes her closer to her husband, Mark Wright. I don't think that'll last much longer. I said, she said she's not going to move out to America. He lives in Los Angeles. Uh, he doesn't have any work in this country. There's nothing for him. He's put on some affected American accent. He's just a, a, an interviewer on, uh, on an entertainment uh, programme. They're sort of saying he's a new James Corden. Unfortunately, he's not. Neither as witty nor as funny and has some very dodgy friends who'd need to be looked at very, very carefully. You wait till the, uh, till the American press discover that one of his best friends has been locked up in prison for assault. Oh, yes. Jack Tweed comes with history. And one of the best friends of Mark Wright, who has now taken to Twitter to talk about how much he likes looking at pictures of Rita Ora and everybody else. Must make Michelle Keegan look a bit silly, mustn't it, really? But as I say, if that's the way their marriage goes, I wouldn't trust him as far as I could throw him. I really wouldn't. And uh, it's, it's just embarrassing. Elton John uh, was talking to him about his... Uh, his kids, and also the reality of this farewell tour. So Elton John's going on a farewell tour in three years' time. And uh, and it it's just doesn't make it... But he, he does have this very weird American twang. Do you, do you want to hear it? This is him talking... So this is Mark Wright, you know, like, what? From Essex? Bit of an Essex boy. He was a bit of a plank years ago. So he's talking to Liam Neeson, and, uh, as I say, it's a very odd accent. The jeans haven't disappeared. You wear skinny jeans too? Yeah. That's the, uh... Well, these are slim fit, they're known as, but... That's what we call them. Mine are actually called cigarette fit. Like, oh. as tight as they can be. I love them. Yeah, it's comfy, straight, right? I know. Fashion advice off of Liam Neeson. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the future. I hear a rumour there's a chance you won't be doing action movies anymore. Nah, that's all. Who said that? <laughs> I think we're going to do one next year. Nice. I think everybody's going to be very pleased, because Taken is... So many people's favourite movie, especially. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so speechless by that. I was just going, he's a bit naff, isn't he? He's a bit bland. He's a bit one... He, he's a bit... He's a very odd colour, too. <laughs> Honestly, how, how cruel can people be, ladies and gentlemen? Answering this business, very, very cruel. Uh, what else do we have in the paper today? The... Uh, oh, dear, I'm trying to find something which is a light story. There's no light stories. There's nothing. It's all... You know, doom, gloom, and here comes the snow again, and people trying to cope with it, and, you know, and then people saying, oh, I don't know, then there's Corbyn betraying his own Brexit voters. Uh, I'm more interested in Team GB. They're lambs. Uh, five of them. And uh, they arrived in the middle of Britain's big freeze because it's lambing time. And this is the time... Because the only people who don't go on strike or the people who don't, you know, stop when the weather gets bad, farmers... Farmers. Farmers just carry on, don't they? Farmers carry on. They go out there in all weathers. They've got to do the lambing. I think in one of them, they, they showed us a short while ago, it was uh, a farmer. It's a, a docudrama, I think, on the BBC, uh, where they go back to these farms and they check on how they're doing. And they had to move a little caravan into the barn because these lambs are being born all the time. And if a lamb is rejected by the mother, you've got to make sure that the new mother finds it. And then, oh, so it goes on. And, uh, and they don't. They, they don't complain about it. 
they get they get a pretty rough deal actually farmers pretty rough deal so this is their lambing time and so now they're sort of all these little lambs they've got heater lamps on and everything else to keep them going because if you're a little tiny lamb and it's freezing they're outside i'd be wrapping myself in straw I really would. Uh, the Ice Cream King is the bloke who's sold. He reckons three million cones. Looks like he's eaten three million cones. But uh, he says there is nothing better than a nice ice cream shared with the family on uh, a hot day. He's absolutely right. He's absolutely right. There's nothing more delightful. Sitting on a pier somewhere, Frinton or wherever else has a pier, and uh, with an ice cream in your heart. I'm not even bothered about the flake. I'm not bothered about 99s. People go, oh, you must have a 99. I'm really not interested. Really not interested. But it's it's absolutely lovely. Absolutely lovely to do that. And just stare out to sea. Uh, Ken Dodd. My God, he looks like he's on his last legs. I don't want to say that because he's sort of, it, it seriously looks like a corpse at the moment. He's only 90 and he was surrounded by flag-waving diddy men. Nothing but praise for the NHS staff, as indeed has anybody who's ever been treated by them. And, as, you know, there are a few mistakes that get through, but generally speaking. Uh, the Romany clan, who sold slaves in a cellar for 200 quid. Uh, this is a gang uh, who trafficked destitute slaves to the UK from Eastern Europe to swindle benefits. And uh, here they all are. Is it, is it just me or does it seem to be that all these Romany families that come over here are all on the f all on the fiddle that's what i seem to be reading all the time it can't be right can it it's not right but they they what they did they abducted people brought them here and they said that they have to take this money because it's got to go to the queen they they convinced these uh, these people and um it's it does seem we're reading more and more of these stories i don't like the stories like that they kind of kind of make me feel slightly depressed i think uh steve talking about banning snowballs when i was in school a student Threw a snowball and it hit the head teacher smack in the face. She was not happy, says Jake. Not surprised, actually. Well, they banned them in a lot of schools now, and so they should. It's like conkers. You know, I mean, you know, we all go, ooh, conkers. That was all right. We would manage with it. But unfortunately, nowadays, you can't do this sort of thing. Driving through Lewisham, listening to the programme, what passed me on the other side of the road was a gritting lorry, which is a bit of a novelty to see this morning, Steve. Um, because uh, there was a snowplow attachment to the front and it was playing the snow onto the pavement and onto the pedestrians waiting at the bus stop. Good Lord. Bill the Milk says, I've been through Barking, Raynham, Warley and now in Brentwood. About three inches now. Gritters are out but seem to be following me. <laughs> Maps they think you're responsible. Three inches of the fluffy stuff in Hanwell. Ruby the dog, very happy, Steve. It's also a full moon on Thursday. So anybody who can get out at night and see the illuminated snowy landscape is in for a treat, says CJ. There's something pretty about it. Even looking out into Leicester Square a minute ago, it did look particularly pretty, actually. And uh, sympathies, uh, says Stephen, for the air hostess. Me too. French Air Force, RAF pilot for 10 years, then 20 years as a captain at Lufthansa. I still can't sleep either. <laughs> oh, God. It's awful, isn't it, really? I know. I, I do sympathise. I do sympathise. But because uh, I know what it's like. Jan in Dunstable says, talking about ice creams, when I was a girl, I used to love it when the Walls ice cream van came round. You'd buy the little bricks of ice cream wrapped in paper. They either came with wafers or a square shaped cornet. I can't remember the Mr. Softy man. Oh, I can. Ding, 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 ding. Came a Mr. Softy, which was always very good, actually. And, um, oh, yeah, I used to love the, the round bits of ice cream, which went into the round cornets. Oh, here we go. This is, uh, here we go here. This is uh, somebody driving their car in to town. Uh, this is, the, it's a Defender. What's a Defender? A Land Rover. Oh, right. It's a Land Rover he's driving uh, this morning and uh, heading into town. Oh, I wish you well. I wish you well. Just, be, just remember, some roads will not have been gritted and some roads will be very slippy slidey. Not so good. Uh, the blockbuster writer Penny Vincenzi has died at the age of 78. 78. Good Lord above. And Anne Widdicombe's column today, she's talking about uh, the Archbishop of Canterbury has uh, the right to a roof over his head. Obviously, poor old sometimes Anne Widdicombe is so far of the mark for a little short, fat woman who does pantomime and a few little reality shows because she needs the money. And the Archbishop of Canterbury was complaining about people with two homes. And it turns out... But the Archbishop of Canterbury has got two homes. He's got a gîte in France, you know, which he doesn't really need. And so Anne, of course, springs to his defence. Somebody told me a story the other day. They phoned her up at 10 o'clock in the morning. She went mad.
because she doesn't she doesn't answer the phone before ten o'clock in the morning for some I don't know, there's something odd about her. I'm not surprised she can't be married. There's no chance that anybody would ever want to put up with uh, with ridiculous diva like behaviour. Uh, from her. A bit like sort of Cheryl or just about any one of a number of other people you can think of. Pretty nice to be company. Welcome to Snow, 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 Snow. Yes, it snowed in Leicester Square. I just spoke actually to uh, to Bill Overton from our news desk and he was saying, he said he came in one part, he said, I've never seen snow like that. <laughs> it literally, it came down in a very, it was like yesterday when I came back in. We had a, a big uh, meeting yesterday, which we do every few weeks. And, um, and when I came in, it was quite nice. A little bit overcast, and I tweeted, overcast sky, what does that mean? Snow. Blow me down. Within a couple of hours, it was, uh, it was snowing. And we looked out the window, and people, my friend Toby took a picture of it, and everybody was taking pictures of it. Uh, Angela and Bob tried to take a picture of their garden, and they said, there is a garden under there somewhere. <laughs> I'm convinced they just take pictures over the years because every year they seem to get snow and it's the only time that their garden looks the same as anybody else's. But it's it's quite not I quite like it. We we've we've got kids uh, at home and they've they've sort of scraped the snow up to make a little mountain of snow. But of course now it's it's cold, it's set. So I've got all this snow on my car. I'm going to have to wait till it thaws because I'm just never going to never going to get the car out. Not that I was planning on taking the car out at all today. Uh, an inch or so of snow, says Jill in Glasgow. Steve, I can see the Campsie Hills from here and it looks so beautiful. I think it, do you know, I think this, this country looks stunning in the snow. It's miserable, I realise, for people stuck in it or people who can't get out or, you know, your pipe freezes or you know, any of these sort of things. You know, it's not a lot of fun. I've got a water butt uh, on the patio and the ice must be about three inches thick. Seriously, it's like, you can imagine what it's like in really, really cold places. Over here, I mean, it's it's not too bad. Tunbridge Wells, it's minus 11, apparently. My friend Rich is, uh, is down that way. On the night shift, Steve, snowing loads at the factory here and uh, feeling sorry for the forklift drivers outside in minus four and probably skidding everywhere in a nice warm laboratory. Uh, in the early 2000s, uh, says Mal, uh, who's in Norfolk, it took me 13 and a half hours to drive 105 miles from North London to uh, Derham in Norfolk. Uh, that was via the M11. The main problem being ice and jackknife trucks. Hence, it's my belief that as soon as the dire weather conditions are expected, all heavy trucks should be directed off the motorways. In most parts of Germany, car owners are compelled to have studded snow or ice tyres. Same in Austria. They have to buy these chains. You've got to put snow chains on your car because when the snow comes down, it comes down like rain, but it's snow. Got to be very careful. Um, a guy called uh, Bobby Nutt was in Benidorm. I've heard of him, but I, I didn't know enough about him. Uh, he was an actor and comedian. He died last September, age 71, and he snubbed his children in his will. So we've got Elton John's mother, who snubbed Elton, but she only had 560,000 quid or something, split between two people, and she left Elton some photographs. He doesn't need the money. He really doesn't need the money at all. Bobby Nutt, though, uh, had four children, um, and he left little or nothing for them. Uh, two didn't receive a penny from his £350,000 will, while the other two were left just £5,000 each. Isn't that interesting, what people do? People now make a big thing. First of all, we have to discover who's going out with whom, you know, or, you know, and you hear it from the reality uh, tat that's out there. Um, and, and then you sort of read that he left £350,000. That would be the price of a property, I would think. Because depending on where he lived, you know, you might find where he comes from, three hundred and fifty grand gets you a lot. But then people decide not to leave anything. Exactly the same as Joan Crawford. And to my children, and then she named the children, I leave nothing for which they will be well aware. And and they weren't really. They'd had to put up with the vile Joan Crawford. You know, a great actress she might have been. Vile person she certainly was. The public persona was all cutesy, 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 dressing the kids up in the same miniaturised outfits that she had and doing the Christmas message. You know, we just like to say a very Merry Christmas. But at the time, she was beating the hell out of them with coat hangers. Elton, incidentally, is worth £319 million. Pounds. I mean, I think it's going to be a... A long, long time before he runs out of cash. Every day we get the blooming word game, don't we, with the uh, with the producer. So 319 million. Um, I don't think it... You know, he didn't speak to his mother for ages. He was the one who said, don't do this, don't do that. And she went against him. And so that was it. That was it. They never spoke for nine years. I did say at the time, you know, we've all done it. We've all been there. 
you know, we've all fallen out with somebody and then, you know, a year down the line, you can't remember why you fell out with them in the first place. And then you sort of think to yourself, why, you know, why were you like that? Why did you do that? And then it's very difficult to try and repair the damage. I think Elton, being being such an old queen, decided that he couldn't talk to his mother again because she did... I love the way that he wrote a letter to his mother saying, you know, nice to see you, blah, 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 Godspeed to heaven and all the rest of it. Signed, Elton. Why not sign it Reg, which is his name? Why would you sign it Elton? Seems a bit ridiculous, doesn't it? 84850, uk. CJ says, re-lambing. The ewes are brought indoors for lambing in a barn on a bed of fresh, clean straw. When they lamb, they put in an individual pen with their lambs with plenty of food, water and hay, for it warms up outside and they're strong enough to be put out in the fields. I know, I've, I've watched the whole process. I watched, I'm quite an expert on lambing. I used to live in a little community up in Yorkshire where there were farms. All our village was just full... Uh, farms. The beastie from the Eastie reached us uh, last night, Steve, outside of Glasgow. Hope you're staying cosy and warm down there. Mind you, I believe it's hit pretty hard. Listen, it's, it's just a bit of snow. As long as we don't fall over, the producer and I, we should be OK. I've got this horrible feeling either one of us is going to drop down before we get to the uh, edge of the, the bus stop or we we'll slip into the road. That's the sort of thing that worries me. The sort of thing that frightens me. I'm more, you know, when you're young, you fall over, you laugh. I can remember going out getting drunk years and years ago. Yeah, what's your and and I remember I remember uh, we went out and it was a New Year's Eve and we decided that we were going to get a bus to a pub and after we'd been into the pub it had snowed and it was very icy underfoot and if I fell over once I probably fell over twenty times in between the bus stop and getting back to my place and every time we laughed and la so of course it hurt more and more the more it hurt the more we laughed. So by the time I got in, you know, and sort of checked my body, I thought I looked all right. Next morning, I was a mass of bruises. Nowadays, I couldn't fall over 20 times. They'd be carting me off to hospital. Far too dangerous. Far too dangerous. And, and if the producer falls, he definitely won't be laughing. Definitely won't, because it's, you know, if you're of the slightly fuller figure, Rubenesque, you know, it hurts. It hurts to fall over, no matter what you do. You know, you think, oh, if somebody's sort of full of figure, it's going to cushion the blow. Bloody well doesn't. Bloody well doesn't. Have you got stairs in your house? Oh, right, oh. God, that must make a nightmare for you, mustn't it? Stairs. Do you ever stagger back in drunk? Probably not, actually. Oh, you do? Really? Oh, there you go. Live and learn, don't we? But I, uh, yesterday, my boss said to me, I said, this is the latest that I've opened the Prosecco. Uh, because I was in here for three o'clock, I was in here actually a bit before three o'clock, quite a bit before three o'clock, and I said normally by this time I'd have had a glass of Prosecco with my lunch, because that's my sort of, my early evening meal, and he said, he said, are you drunk now? <laughs> I said, you must be joking. I, kept, I didn't, I didn't get in till um, about um, time, about half past five, quarter to six, which was, uh, which was quite a late day for me. And, uh, and then woke up, so I seriously thought I'd be looking at snow this morning, and I was, but it's the aftermath of yesterday. And now you look outside, apparently there were some little people in Leicester Square throwing snowballs earlier on. They won't be doing that again. And, uh, you know, because it's just, you know, it used to be fun, and uh, you know, uh, nowadays, if you compact snow into your hand, it's quite dangerous. Quite dangerous. On the night shift, Steve, uh, oh, we've done that one, haven't we, actually? Showing in, uh, snowing in West Hampstead. I've felt it on the wall of my little balcony. I may need to borrow one of your shovels. You had a very good bargain, Steve. Yes, I did, actually. I did. I had a, a very, very good bargain with a the shovel. They, they were reducing them because they've closed the home bases and they were a pound each. They were normally nine pounds. Was it there or was it somewhere else? Garden centre. Anyway, quid each. I was quite happy. Angie said, snowing in Bushy Heath. Just been out to Saltar Park. It was lovely out there and cold. Is it your birthday tomorrow or the third? Neither. Neither. I'm the, uh, I'm the 17th. Oh, did I mention the 17th? Did I mention I'm a St. Patrick's Day baby? <laughs> no snow in Formby, says Mike, but very cold. And another one here, says Jane, I think it's unfair of you to be critical of people for being single and not in a relationship. Oh, you're single, aren't you? You can always tell, can't you? You can always tell the ones who are single. Uh, like it's a fault when you're happily single. Is it different rules for you? Of course it is. Of course it is. I have no sympathy for people who are single at all. Of course not. Grow up, get over yourself. Goodness sake, I mean, well, I'm in a miserable existence. That's why you're miserable, you see. If you weren't miserable, Jane, that'd be fine. But you've, you've kind of let the cat out of the bag. You've made yourself out to be really miserable. And it's unfair to be critical of people for being single. Well, there must be something the matter with you if you're single. 
You seriously think that Anne Whittacombe's a good catch? Do me a favour, please, please, don't embarrass yourself. Heavens above, the reason she's single is she's, uh, she's a diva and she's unpleasant. It's as simple as that. You've only got to watch her on the television. Would Anne like to come to the dining room? No, I won't. And you think, well, you'd never survive in a relationship. Nobody would go out with you and so consequently nobody has been out with her. I think she might have been out with people at college, but that's what she learned to be a little bit, a little bit snooty. Uh, 84850, steve at lbc.co.uk. Zach said, did Elton John change his name by deed poll? Or is it a stage name? It's a business name. It's a business name. But he, he, he probably changed it, I should imagine. Before he was famous, it was Elton Hercules, John. So he's got a, a thing with Hercules written on. Oh, I'm late. Oh, sorry. LBC News Time. For six. I'd leave a bit earlier this morning. That would be the advice that uh, I would offer you. Because the roads are going to be very busy. The trains will be heaving. Some will be cancelled. Flights will undoubtedly be cancelled because we've had snow. Like, it's a big surprise for us. So uh, just be aware of it. If you leave it till the last minute, you might be disappointed. You might be standing on a station. Very miserable. Very fed up. Very cold. Very wet. Very not going anywhere. So we're on snow alert this morning on uh, LBC. Gemma Collins threatens legal action. I mean, she really is deluded beyond all manner of a doubt. You remember she was going to sue the BBC uh, because she inadvertently, being a bit thick, fell into um, a trap that was sort of going down to bring people up again. She fell into it, uh, claiming she'd not been told. She'd been told everything about it because that's what they were doing. Unfortunately, went in one ear with her and just floated around in the void. And then the other day, somebody was taking the mickey out of her having her nails done on this... I think it's this programme which is... She's apparently looking for some quasi, it's a bit fake date sort of thing. Because we're led to believe she's going out with a boyfriend. He's a crim. You know, she likes those sort of people. They're about the same intellect as her. And uh, somebody took the mickey out of her nail. So she's, she says, you know, I'm taking legal action. You know, taking legal action about what? She's so dumb. I mean, you, you really, it's seriously, it almost beggars belief. We thought Joey Essex was stupid. My God, she's, she's kind of taken the mantle on that one. Uh, Doddy, tickled to go home. He's 90. Tickled to go anywhere, I should imagine. Uh, will the Spice Girls be singing at Prince Harry's wedding? Apparently Mel C uh, said that, uh, yes... Uh, they'd been invited, and so they were pressing them on. What does the invitation look like? Where is it? Show us the invitation. That's what they want to see now, but they're not singing. A spokesman for the Spice Girls said, uh, no, they're not singing, because they're all going, what she said? Oh, we are all going to the wedding. Why would they go to the wedding? What's the point of that? I don't quite understand. Will will Mel C, Mel C is uh, Melanie Chisholm, who's lovely. Will, will Mel B be going there with sort of her ex, Mr Belafonte, or just taking copies of her DVD to distribute. That'd be a nice thing to do. Victoria will be going looking as miserable as sin. And, and what was the other one, actually? What was the other one? Who's the other one in there? Oh, uh, Jerry. She'll, she'll go. She'll, she'll go with the family. But uh, I wonder how many, I wonder how many people will be going. Because it's, it's an interesting one, isn't it? You can't work out. Would they be full to the raft? What happens if you cancel at the last minute? Do you then get sort of blasted into eternity? <laughs> uh, Jane says, yes, I am single. I could tell straight away. I knew you were single. You write like a singleton. You write like a singleton. You write like a singleton. You're not happy with it at all, I can tell. Richard says, there's a lot of dandruff falling around London this morning. Be careful on your way home. We saw it first. We saw it first. We, we got the best view in Leicester Square. We overlook Leicester Square. We're the big building opposite the Hampshire. We're big. We go all the way to the Charing Cross Road, and uh, so we saw all the snow. This dry snow, Steve, is uh, is unusual. It swirls around, limiting visibility, like polystyrene. Oh, do you remember those polystyrene balls, the little tiny ones? God, they were irritating. Stay safe on the way home. No slipping or falling from a 4 a.m. spike. At the A13 around the M25 junction is shocking. No more than 30 miles an hour in both directions, except for that a hole uh, in the white van who wants to do 50... Uh, love the show, says Matt. That's the trouble, isn't it? You all pootle along, t -t 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 -t, and there'll be some idiot who decides that they're going to sort of go for it. And you think to yourself, you're almost willing them to have an accident, aren't you? You're willing them to have an accident, and you think, no, because that will then involve other people. Not so good. Uh, snowed in Green Hive overnight, went out before it gets ruined and slushy. Cats join me as they're enjoying it. Do cats like snow? I'm not sure if... I asked a friend of mine, she has two cats and she said well actually they're not outside they're inside sitting by the radiator they don't want anything to do with the snow at all <laughs> which is good uh, so that's quite nice uh, and a bunch of whingers in the uk says michael in vancouver i just phoned a friend in northern uh, northern 
British Columbia, in Canada, is digging out three-foot-high snowdrifts just to get to his mailbox. Yeah, but the, the Brits moan about the weather. We're, we're just absolutely world-class when it comes to moaning about weather. It'll be the wrong type of cold. It'll be the wrong type of snow. You know, in the autumn, it's the wrong type of leaves. In the summer, it'll be the wrong type of sun. It'll be, you know, there's always something that we've got to... That's what we do. We're British. We talk about the weather. We're obsessed with the weather. Obsessed with... First thing people say is, oh, that weather, yes. Oh, it was so hot. So hot. That's what we're obsessed with. And we've always been like that. It's nothing new. But what do, what do people moan about in Canada? The Brits moaning about the weather. Because that's what we do. But it doesn't matter, does it? Uh, demonising of diesel cars blamed for the climate uh, blow. I've never had a diesel. I've driven a diesel car, but I've never actually owned one myself. I didn't, uh, I didn't really fancy a diesel. I always thought they were noisy. So I didn't, uh, I didn't bother, actually. Uh, 84850, steve at lbc.co.uk. And we'll try and weave in as uh, many uh, of your uh, texts and emails. Ian said, stuck on the A1. Uh, Stanford, glad I've got DAB radio in the car to listen to you to keep me entertained. Well, you might be there for ages. You never know, do you? Not very good. And Darren says, small... Small heavy on the M25 northwestern stretch. Matrix saying salt spreading, but not one single gritter out there. That's the problem, isn't it? That's the problem, isn't it? But uh, somebody else talking about the Brits who, who whinge. We can't help it. We are a nation of whingers. We, we're a nation of cures and a nation of whingers. That's, that's the way it works. You know, people like that. There's also the story in the paper today of the father who saved his son from the death penalty. Uh, Bart Whitaker was due to be executed last week for the 2003 murders of his mother and brother. He's alive today only because his dad, Kent, they've all got a great name, haven't they, in America? Bart Kent. Uh, he survived the attack. He begged the authorities to show mercy. And, uh, as I say, I don't... You know, obviously it's his son. That's what he would be... That's what he would be doing. Uh, also, mobility scooter madness. You've all seen this. And here is uh, a pensioner who tried to ride home down a motorway in Cheshire. I mean, you can't believe it. There's somebody in uh, the Bristol uh, ring road with cars passing at 70 miles an hour. You know, these are mobility scooters. These are driven by idiots. You can't drive on a motorway in a mobility scooter. Don't they send instructions with them when they arrive, or do you just go and buy one? Somebody was uh, cruising down the inside lane of a city ring road and apparently stuck up two fingers at drivers who warned him to get off. See? Nasty as well. Nasty piece of work. Nasty piece of work. And then there was uh, a police van pulling in front of one particular bloke who was tootling alongside traffic on the A500 at lunchtime. We were called by concerned motorists who'd seen the man in his scooter. Two vehicles attended the scene and helped get him off the road so he could get home safe. Well, he's obviously an idiot. He shouldn't have been allowed on the blooming thing. Do you have to take a test to go on a mobility scooter? Or do you just sort of... Uh, could I just go and buy one and then pretend that I'm disabled or something like that? It's not something we're used to dealing with, but we were happy to help. That took two vehicles away from probably crime that was being committed because of some dodo bird sitting on a, uh, on a thing here. Beverly Jones criticised the scale of the response by saying, does it really need two police cars to get an old man in a mobility scooter off the road? Yes, it does. That's exactly what it done. This was the driver getting off the road as cars raced past him at 70 miles an hour. An idiot. Users are advised to avoid dual carriageways, which have higher speed limits. The government rules state only Class 3 scooters, which have a maximum speed of 8 miles an hour, can be driven on roads. But, of course, people buy these little things now, don't they? And you can pick them up fairly inexpensively, you know, £249, £300, something like that. And then and people think, because, it's, because you charge it up, you can drive, you can drive it anywhere. Well, you can't. You can't. So the police might have to start prosecuting uh, people. Uh, 84850, steve at uh, Walsh says, can you tell if I'm single or not? Looking at the picture, I would suspect yes. <laughs> Storm says, my cat's just gone out in the snow, watched her tiptoeing across the lawn. I think it's so funny when they sort of tiptoe and they're, they're doing it on tippy toes because they're not sure what's underneath. Uh, I adore it, says Kate, fresh snow. So why do I always want to trample in it and make it look less pretty? I don't know. I used to hate it when you build your snowman in the garden 
and then the next morning all you'd see is your footprints all around it. That kind of spoiled it for me. But, uh, but interesting, nevertheless. But we have got it. We have got snow in London. You are advised to, uh, to keep listening to the broadcast on LBC so we can get you, you know, hopefully the best way, let you know what's closed, what's open. There will be train cancellations. There will be flights cancelled. So just check with your carrier just to make sure that your particular uh, mode of transport is actually operating today. A friend of mine who uh, set off a short while ago for work, he says, uh, really do set off earlier. Uh, the road's not too bad on his particular route, but everyone set off early, so there's a lot more traffic out there on the road. See, obviously people heeding my advice, you know, just in case, but there will be more traffic out there, so that's why you've actually got to leave a bit earlier. OK, good. Uh, Steve, again, let the wife in from the snow, couldn't concentrate on the show. That's Alan again. And uh, Steve, literally to the second, says Chris, of you talking about a white van driving at 50 miles an hour. One went shooting past me. Snowy weather and bad roads. I said, you know, it, it comes as no surprise to me, Chris. I see this all the time. I can go down the M3 motorway and it'll be really bad conditions. And phew, cars go straight past you think, are you mad? Generally speaking, and it's not young drivers. These aren't young, you know, tearaways. It's, it's sort of, you know, people with families sometimes sitting in the back and you think, are you mad doing speed like this, driving on roads that could have black ice on? Oh, dear, honestly, absolute madness. Uh, been snowing on Mercia Island most of the night, even had some thunder and lightning. Looked great at three o'clock this morning, says Ian. Claire reckons that North Holt's looking pretty. Don't be silly, North Holt's never looked pretty. <laughs> I think the Polish War Memorial looks good. That's the only thing down there. And uh, Phil Vickery's up, so that's good news. He's up early this morning. Leave early. Unless, of course, you're not... Well, no, you, you might be a bit late for leaving for work, aren't you? Might be. Did, it really, did you really do things with the Muppets the other day? I, was, I had them not booked in, but I'd sort of... I provisionally said yes to doing an interview with, uh, with Kermie and Miss Piggy. And then at the, the, the last minute, I was quite grateful that I didn't have to do it, actually. Just in case. But uh, were you doing... You, you're cooking cookies which is also uh, quite nice. Angela says, we didn't used to be whingers in Yorkshire in the 50s when I went to school. We had to go. My mother said, you're not stopping at home. Get off to school. Two miles up and down hills. It was freezing, but it was fun. Oh, no, it's snowing in London, Steve. When, when, where is it all? We're all going to die. I know, that's what you'd think, actually. If they, but they will be cancelling trains. But as a friend of mine said, leave now. If you normally say leave by 6, 6.30, go now, because there's more traffic on the road because people are anticipating how bad it is. And if you're a lunatic who's out there belting along at 50 miles an hour, you know, more fool you. More fool you. There's one here that says, I've just dropped the old man off to work. A good two or three inches of snow in South London to Tottenham Court Road. No salt or gritting. Crazy white van drivers up my bumper. Land Rovers cutting across lanes. What's wrong with these people? I don't know. I, I, just, I just don't know. I think it's because people think that they can do it and get away with it. I'd be too frightened to actually go out there and do speeds like that. I, I mean, I really would be. It's, it's, it just it frightens me that there might be some form of accident. Somebody might step out in front of a vehicle, and at 50 miles an hour, even at 20 or 30 miles an hour, you could do serious damage to somebody. So I, I wouldn't even risk it. I really wouldn't. And um, Phil Vickery sent me a photo, uh, which is very nice. Oh, <laughs> you with um, Fozzie Bear and Kermie. It always makes me laugh, actually. Because the trouble is the, uh, the, the puppeteers are so good with them from, from Henson's workshop. I mean, they really are very, very good. And, and they just sort of they bring them to life. It's like when you watch ventriloquists, they bring their dolls to life. Paul Zerdin can bring Sam to life and the baby and everything. And you truly believe. So after a while, you stop looking at, at, the, at the person operating them. And you're, it's like War Horse. You can tell that they're experienced puppeteers. It's just absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. And so another one here says, uh, good morning, Steve. Hope you're keeping warm. Listening to you from Playa Flamenca in the Costa Blanca area of Spain. Playa Flamenca. I saw some girls walking down the road. The other day, they were, they were doing, I think, a hen night, but they were all wearing flamenco dresses, you know, the traditional red and what. And I remember watching a programme on the television over the weekend, and I thought that was traditional Spanish flamenco dresses. No, Franco brought those in. So they're relatively new. 
early flamenco dresses didn't look at all like that. This was this was the commercial side to make sure that people remembered it. So you'd buy your little dolls, and that's why all that we used to have one as well, a Spanish flamenco doll. Well, it wasn't mine, obviously. I had an action man. And uh, my mother brought this thing back from Spain, and she had that, that traditional red and white polka-dotted type of dress, but Franco brought it in. Nothing to do with any history or anything like that. They just thought it looked, uh, looked better. Coming up to the Basildon area is Matt, and it's amazingly bad. It's got to be a good four inches, and only one lane's being used, and I'm... Still doing 30 miles an hour. You know, even at 30, you can have a serious accident. Somebody's only got to slide into the back of your vehicle or you slide into the back of somebody else's. That's your day off. That's your day off straight away. Uh, Waj says, you're wrong. I've been married five years. Yeah, but it's not a good marriage, is it? <laughs> I always find an answer for something, I should think. Uh, Kit and I, says Pedita, went out for a bite to eat last night. We were asked if we could submit a positive review online. The waitress told us we'd have desserts knocked off the bill for our troubles. Interesting new promotion concept, bribery marketing. Well, I'd be up for that one. Yeah, I'll write that. Really fantastic time. What sort of desserts do we get for free? Do we get hot apple pie with ice cream? I could eat that now. I could eat hot or strudel. I've got this thing about strudel at the moment. I can't have it. It's just full of sugar. But, uh, you know, perhaps Phil, Phil Vickery could cook me a strudel. See, I think today, because it's, because it's sort of an overcast, miserable day, it's got to be another winter warmer. It's got to be a winter warmer. A nice, a nice curry would be lovely. Why did uh, Fern... Why did Fern... Why did Holly the other day... She was, she was laughing at something James Martin cooked. He did um, a creme brulee, and for some, for some reason she laughed. I thought she was going to be sick. Oh, it's lovely. He's in the papers today. He's complaining he thought he was sidelined by the BBC because of his northern accent. So there you go. Uh, Ali says, listening to you from Dubai. Normally listen every day in the podcast, but I can listen live today. Woo! What do you mean, puppeteers, says Dan the Posty. The Muppets are real, aren't they? You just ruined my childhood. No, I mean, not all of them are operated by puppeteers. Some of them are real people, like Kermie and Miss Piggy. Um, you know, they're actually, they're actually real, you know. Um, like the Tooth Fairy and the Loch Ness Monster and Father Christmas. And Pixie Bow Bells, or whatever she's called. Fairy Bow Bells. <laughs> It's amazing what you have to try and remember to say, isn't it, at certain certain times of the year. Uh, Steve says, Zach, I'm renaming the beast from the east, the hysteria from Siberia. Yeah, I think you're probably right. But isn't it funny, we're all going to meltdown. Oh, my God, a little bit of snow. A little bit of snow. You know, special programmes. What's it going to be like today? Don't know. Snow. We're going to have loads and loads of snow. And people go, how are we going to cope? And they go, well, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm literally, I'm, I'm doing nothing today. I'm sort of preparing for hospital for tomorrow. I say preparing, it's called psyching yourself up for it again, just in case something goes wrong. It'll be fine. It'll be absolutely fine. It's just a little bit of, um, it's sort of, it's not doing what it's supposed to do. So I thought, best to get checked. Best to get checked. We don't want to leave it too late, do we? And uh, and I was trying to work out the other day with a friend of mine how I can get my, uh, my uh, blood sugar readings down so I can get the blasted cataracts done so annoying although at the moment they're very good the eye drops are very very good indeed but if you're going in for operations today in hospital good luck just remember they work very hard for not very much money jimmy page and uh, robert that's uh, robert williams you know and through it all show for me protection a lot of amount of affection they're um, they're at loggerheads again because uh, robert williams bought michael winner's old house it's got 42 rooms i've been there not actually been in the place, but I delivered some LBC mugs there some years ago uh, to Michael's uh, now widow, gorgeous Geraldine. And um, uh, next door is Jimmy Page's house, which is lovely. It's a grade one listed tower house. Uh, Robbie, uh, Robert Williams is, is a 46 room house. I don't think it's listed, actually, but he wants to dig out the garden um, at the at the back and put in a swimming pool and uh, a tunnel from the house to the basement, shower and changing rooms, and a gymnasium. I don't know why. Perhaps people feel, you know, if you're going to do that to a house, then go and buy a house that's got a gymnasium and a swimming pool in it already. You can go and buy all sorts of nice places. Anyway, they've fallen out before, and it looks likely it's going to be another sort of falling out, and you think, oh, don't fall out over that. You know, two sort of very rich, successful people, and, uh, and they fall out over you know, digging up and the noise and, and everything else. And that's that's the big problem with it, isn't it? So uh, so there you go. 84850, steve at lbc.co.uk. Winter lunch from Phil Vickery. The offering today is, uh, is faggots. 
Do you know, we used to call them meatballs. Is there a difference between meatballs and faggots? Is it just meatballs are smaller and faggots are sort of less less round and they've sort of got... Because it was always brains, faggots. And, and I remember thinking, because the, the, because the slogan used to be, um, it, it used to be, come home to a real faggot. A lot of gay men were getting quite excited about this, thinking that if you bought brains faggots, somebody was going to turn up on your doorstep. It was like if you bought badidas for the shower gel, some man was going to turn up half naked. <laughs> Never happened. But so, is there a difference? Pork faggots and meatballs. Is there a difference? Do please tell me. And uh, you delivered mugs to Geraldine and she didn't ask you in, says a friend of mine. Well, I don't think she was there. I did promise them when Michael came in for an interview, I said I will, I will deliver the mugs, and I did. I'm hoping she's still got them. Anyway, coming up to the news at six o'clock this morning, we're on Snow Alert on LBC this morning. Olivia Atwood talks about heartache over Chris Hughes. Don't worry, they're just two reality show nobodies. Uh, could the Spice Girls be singing at Prince Harry's wedding? I do hope not. Corbyn's equality czar is the transgender model who claimed all white people are racist. Apparently, I say model, did a couple of days working for L'Oreal, and they went, I don't think we want you anymore. You're not very pleasant at all, are you? Uh, pret a will give a 10 pence refund if you take back plastic bottles. Contactless cards leave us clueless about every day prices and uh, Alexandra Shulman says after 25 years at Vogue she can finally wear what she wants. Good news, liberation. It's early breakfast on LBC. I have to laugh actually, I shouldn't do really, but uh, the uh, the television companies send out their poor reporters. There's a hapless one at the moment uh, who's sort of out there. They haven't even given him a hat to wear and so there's bad weather, there's, there's a pile of gritters behind him and so they ask all the dumb questions like, so, uh, what are conditions like there? And he's going, well I'm standing in front of a Gritting lorry, what do you think? You know, we're not exactly going for a swim, but they haven't given him a hat. I mean, he looks frozen to death, this poor man. I can remember seeing somebody years ago standing outside the Old Bailey, and as usual, if you're filming outside and there's people there, people will sort of go past and go, yeah, wave their hands in the air and all the rest of it. And he said, um, he said, I'm standing outside the Old Bailey, wet, fed up, want to go home, don't want to be a reporter anymore. <laughs> so we're sending our reporters out today as well, and they can report on the snow. But it's different on the radio, isn't it? It's different to when you see these poor people on the television. It's about, why has he got no hat on? You thought, you know, it's freezing cold out there. He's in the Midlands, I think. He's not happy. He's got to hold his own microphone. They've obviously cut back. So, you know, he's got to hold his own microphone, and he's out there, and he's, he's past the age of consent, quite a bit past the age of it, by the look of it, and they're making him stand in front of a gritting lorry. You know, like, good heavens above, snow and a gritting lorry. What could possibly go wrong, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> 84850, stevedlbc.co.uk. I found the difference, incidentally, in case you were worried, and I was worried earlier on, between meatballs and faggots. Because you get brains... I don't. As far as I'm concerned, nobody else makes faggots apart from brains. I think they're frozen and you pop them in the oven. But anyway, apparently, according to Phil Vickery, big difference, meatballs are just mince... And faggots are minced pork belly, heart and liver, wrapped in coal fat and braised. They sound quite nice, actually. I mean, I do quite like them. I suppose what, what you've got to have them with is mashed potato. I tell you what go really well with that. Mashed potato. I bought some chicken curry the other day. I say bought because, as you know, everybody will tell you that I don't have the gift of cooking. Thank God. Uh, because it would be a total disaster. And I was going to add some peas to the curry, then I realised that the curry had peas in it anyway. Something nice about a Chinese curry. There was a place down the road from me in, uh, in Isleworth, a very good Chinese there, and they used to do lovely chicken curries. And obviously they, they did the chicken and they put the peas in all the rest of it, and then they poured over the sauce. Oh, it was delicious. We could have that over mashed potato. Uh, faggots contain offal, Steve. Meatballs don't. And from Chris in Cardiff, I'll be doing sausages in mash, gravy, onions and mushrooms tonight for myself and mum Lois. There you go. And Jane says, don't God strike me down for saying this. Miss Piggy does exist. The GC, the GC, here I am, all right? There's something the matter with her. She's obviously got a few screws loose, hasn't she, poor soul? Uh, maybe you can have a competition, says little Julie. Who can build the best snowman? I'll say, well, the trouble is by the time you get round to doing it, the snow will have vanished. Won't it? I mean, I know that we've, we've still got snow. What's going to happen today is it's going to be cold and it's going to freeze. And, you know, that ice that you've got on there, it's going to take you 10, 15 minutes to get the ice off the car. Even with the engine running. 
and everything else and people going, oh, I'll pour some hot water on it. Great way to crack the windscreen. Why don't you? I spoke to somebody the other day. I said, what have you done? He said, I've tried to get a new windscreen for the car. He said, but it's, they're so expensive now. But they do cheaper versions. I said, don't ever get the cheaper version, please. Uh, Matthew uh, in Tring says, seems to me the bad weather just exacerbates the problem of aggressive driving. And nutters on the road. Wasn't any road rangers I remember in the 70s and 80s. Well, there weren't any cars. 70s and 80s was completely different. The amount of traffic on the road now is phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Must be something in the water. He said, now I'm sounding like my dad. No, you know when you're sounding like your dad, when you sit there watching a television programme and you go, I can't understand a word they're singing. And your kids will look at you and go, you're so old, aren't you? My parents would do that. We'd have Top of the Pops and... Um, and they would automatically be saying, it's, uh, you know, you can't hear what these people are singing. Nobody understands the word. You think, you're just so old, aren't you, nowadays? If the snow continues this weekend, Steve, I may stuck up on southern essentials like Prosecco, sweet, buttery brioche rolls. Hope you're not going to be led astray by that naughty producer making snow angels in the centre of Leicester Square. And uh, this one says, love to Kevin the Milkman. Well, he's still trawling around London, actually, trying to sort of get round in, uh, in an easier way as he possibly can. Because some of the roads, some of the little side roads, very slippy, very, very slippy. Paul Smith was telling us uh, when he was uh, driving home, he said it was very slippy, slidey, not so good. And, uh, and Bella says, honestly, Steve, a bit of snow in London is like shock horror Armageddon. I know, because we don't see it very often. We re that's why we don't see it very often. Big up the 321 bus to New Eltham and South Eastern trains on the Sidcup line. No delays thus far, says Ali. Ah, you speak too soon. You speak too soon. There's bound to be. But halfway through the day, and also everything is going to be so busy because you're going to go outside, you've had snow overnight on the car, you're going to need to defrost it. So you'll turn the engine on, hope somebody doesn't drive off with your car, which seems to be fair. You see, the woman took her car in for an MOT to Halfords. It was on the ramp. Somebody nicked it. Somebody pinched it. Mind you, the producer's got an experience with Halfords as well over his, uh, over his MOT. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Honestly, you'd think, you'd think, think you get a refund. Because the trouble is, all these people have access to Twitter. So if you mention a particular company, they're on to you straight away. When I've mentioned AOL before, and thank God at the moment we're all fine, but they've, uh, but they, they've, somebody will sort of contact me and go, I gather you've been having a few problems, can we help you out? So it does work. They do monitor Twitter. If you've got a complaint about a company, I mean, the producer had terrible troubles. Terrible troubles with it, but they've refunded the money. So that's good news. Because I think good, good customer service is exactly what we need exactly what we need uh, 11 12 minutes past uh, six 12 minutes past six uh what have we got here oh yes why well, dip in the sea can make you ill i don't think anybody's gonna be dipping in the sea in this weather are they actually they probably would people do do things like this when it when it gets to bad weather people do it uh, sarah vine in her column uh, talking about change of heart monica, monica lewinsky uh, is the latest woman to climb aboard the hashtag me too bandwagon in an interview for vanity fair magazine she stopped short of accusing bill clinton of sexual assault but nevertheless confesses she's now questioning the issue of consent between them sarah vine says personally i think lewinsky now 44 was treated appallingly by clinton but that doesn't mean their relationship was non-consensual ill-advised probably reckless yes regrettable certainly but none of these things are the same as non-consensual we all do things when we're young that we come to regret but if as a young ambitious woman i sleep with an older man in the hope of advancement it does not give my grown-up self permission to rewrite history however much i may despise myself for what i did well it's exactly the same isn't it as um as the mp who had an affair with john major you know it's uh you know, that was edwina curry she had it because she thought it would further her her career she was a bit disappointed when uh, when it didn't i mean she did become famous but not through uh, not through that that came out you know a while ago because you look at all the pictures of monica Lewinsky, she's over him like a rash everybody has done something in their past that you might regret later but that isn't constituted. I mean, this this was consensual. Otherwise, she'd have been straight away. She wasn't stupid. But uh, Sarah Vine's done on this uh, pictures here. You know, it looked pretty consensual to me, Monica. Of course it was. She went on TV programmes and spoke about it. She milked it for all it was worth. You know, it's like people who want to sleep with footballers. They've got a, a girl in the paper today. And uh, they're going, and this, this footballer is very lucky to have snagged her. She's a page three girl. She'll go with anybody, <laughs> he says. Especially if they're footballers and rich. 
No point going with somebody poor. What is the point of going with somebody poor? You've got to find somebody. That is how people become famous. You become famous through your association with somebody who is more famous than you and has got more money than you and has got a better job than you. That's how it... That's why I'm, you know, I'm single. Nobody wants to go out with radio presenters. Heavens above, they keep most peculiar hours. Peculiar hours. But it is interesting, isn't it, when you sort of look at people and then years later they go, actually, I didn't enjoy doing that, I wasn't sure about that. And uh, you think, well, you know, with hindsight, you didn't say anything at the time, did you? So uh, I'm not, not really believing it. Oh, my goodness. I'm looking here at central London, Devonshire Street. It's just wall-to-wall -wall snow. Wall -to -wall snow. And be careful, it's virgin snow. You won't know where the road is and the pavement is. You'll recognise the pavement. There'll be people walking on it. That's about as good as it gets. After the news and travel this morning, I'll be catching up with our new friend Adam Dury from WeatherQuest. We know a lot of snow's fallen this morning, but apparently it's not the end of the beast from the east. Adam will let us know what we need to look out for later today and later in the week. Eight minutes past six, a friend of mine driving into uh, London. First of all, he, he sent me a picture of Devonshire Street, just all white. And now he says Bloomin' Region Street. Again, all white. Seriously, it's the first time I've seen uh, roads like this. So let's go back to our friends down at WeatherQuest. Adam Dury is a forecaster there. Morning, Adam. Morning, Steve. Well, thank you so much for the snow. We're very excited. And <laughs> uh, it arrived in the early hours of this morning in Leicester Square. We looked out yep. the window and it was swirling around and now we're covered in a blanket of the white stuff. It's great. Um, I'm assuming because it's still yep. cold, it's going to be with us for the remainder of the day. Yes, and actually with a quite a strong easterly wind um, being there this afternoon or increasing after the snow showers will finish. So actually once you get through, there's one just about coming into Essex which might just get across central and northern London. Uh, so maybe sort of half a centimetre, centimetre, still possible in sort of northern London right up until um, around 10, 11 o'clock this morning. Um, but then after that, these snow showers should cut off and the wind will increase and Actually, it could be a risk of some blowing snow. Um, so actually, even though you've got sort of snow on the roads, then actually it could quite a, sort of sort of blow off the top layer and actually accumulate and be oh. some deeper in places. So definitely, people walking on paths and on the roads, then um, once that uh, snow starts to blow, then could, some places could actually be a lot deeper uh, yeah. than people think. Yesterday, uh, I came into town in the afternoon. And it yep. was lovely and sunny, and then little, two little flakes of snow, and then all of a sudden, Leicester Square is covered with a blanket of snow. And yet, by the time we yep. finished the meeting, it all gone again. Yeah, that's with... Uh, yesterday was... Uh, there was quite a lot of sunshine yesterday. Mm. There is actually a bit of heat be, heat in the sun, so actually if you do get a bit, of, a bit of sunshine, then it will start to melt. But I think, unfortunately, today um, we'll sort of lose the, um, lose the sunshine, actually, but there'll be quite a lot of cloud there. So I think chances are there'll only be the odd bit of brightness, unlike yesterday, where there was actually quite a lot of sunshine around in between the snow showers. Um, today there is going to be a sort of a fair amount of cloud around, so I think there's a sort of lesser chance of the snow melting, but it could at least start to melt if you do get that bit of brightness there but i think there's only going to be sort of limited brightness to actually start melting any snow right. um, that's accumulated because i actually always look up to the heavens if it looks slightly overcast i always think oh snow showers on the way in fact i tweeted yesterday when it's very gloomy in london i thought this will be snow it'll be snow and yet i thought we were going to be all right yesterday and I, I thought today we were going to be fine i thought it was going to be thursday friday which was going to be our nightmare days that is a yeah, secondary risk, really. Um, yeah, I think you won't be the worst affected. That's actually going to be sort of southern uh, South Wales, uh, southwest England and Ireland. Um, that's going to start on Thursday morning. Um, but, yeah, definitely the risk once you get to Thursday night and into Friday, you could quite easily see another um, sort of two, three centimetres coming up from the south. There is still a large uncertainty on actually timing of it. could actually be as early as Thursday afternoon and evening. Um, could be as late as Friday afternoon. Um, but there's definitely the risk of some more snow coming up from the south at some point um, on by sort of Thursday afternoon and through, um, through into Friday afternoon as well. And does um, it cover so for the weekend still, too? Still looking good though that actually temperatures will warm up on Saturday. So I think by the time you get to Saturday there will be a lot more sunshine around so that will start to melt any snow on, on the ground. Um, and also temperatures will be up to around 4 or 5 Celsius on Saturday so um, at least that will start any, start any melt and, and get the snow uh, get the snow cleared away by the weekend, hopefully. Right. Are there any parts of the country which, which haven't had snow? Is there anywhere I should go and build my house um, or pitch my tent? <laughs> I'd say currently uh, the only real place that we haven't really seen much snow is probably Birmingham, sort of Worcestershire area, oh, right. around Shrewsbury. Um, mm. they've, they've sort of been quite far inland 
Um, and I think really some, some places in Oxfordshire and Swindon haven't had too much at the moment. Um, and South, well, Swindon South deserves it. Of... Swindon definitely deserves it. <laughs> I've been to Swindon <laughs> I down before. In... <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I think down, down into southwest, uh, southwest England, sort of north of Exeter, um, at the moment they've not had um, really much snow down there, but um, they're looking to be um, at least increased risk of snow um, over the next few days, and really they, they could be the worst affected by Friday, oh. um, even though there is going to be a lot more places in northeast England, Scotland, and eastern Scotland, um, which will be actually slightly more than that, that than southwest England, um, but they're more sort of showery, so it won't be um, sort of quite as widespread, I'd say, um, but still could as you said earlier, sort of Scotland could have 30, 40 centimetres in places, um, especially over high ground. Wow. So um, that, that, that's by Friday, um, sort of fi- first thing Friday morning. So they're still continuing snow showers through Friday afternoon. So could be a fair amount more um, by the end of Friday. Oh, as long as it hits Swindon, I don't mind. Not too, <laughs> not too worried about it. Uh, Adam, nice to talk to you. Thank you so much. No worries. Thanks. Take care. Adam Dury, forecaster at uh, WeatherQuest. Poor old Swindon. I only say that because I used to spend sort of uh, minutes in Swindon. You don't spend any longer than that in Swindon. But uh, so, so far they've actually escaped it. They must be laughing, looking at all the pictures on the telly, going, look at these places here. I mean, like we were the other day. You know, we were supposed to have this snow last week. We've only got it uh, this week. And looking at the roads that a friend of mine has been happily sending me pictures of, uh, in London, you, you tend to be, do take care, please. If you haven't, you know, you might be one of these people who leaves at seven o'clock in the morning. I would leave earlier. The roads are busier because people are leaving earlier. Watch your speed. Watch the distance between you and the car in front. Uh, in some of those little side roads, doesn't matter where you are, whether you're in London, in little side roads or up and down the length and breadth of this land, the side roads are with the worst ones, especially if they're on an incline. You know, it'll be slip sliding all over the place. Uh, somebody here, Rob, says he's, uh, he's stuck in the depth at Cockfosters and he sent me a picture he says only the three signal failures today so far let's see how close to Uxbridge I can get <laughs> you see I thought there wouldn't be any problem with with trains I just thought they run on tracks he's a Piccadilly line driver is he really good lord above is this the pic where is this is this Cockfosters here it was quite pretty doesn't it with snow on the not as much snow as we've got in London but you don't slide on the rails do you I mean does does the snow affect the starting out because sometimes we actually slide on the rails anyway you go you can feel the wheels turning round while it sort of picks up speed I have to turn the electricity off it's ridiculous I just put another shilling in the meter and make sure they can get there Honestly, we've done all these disasters. I did like Sarah Vine's column, apart from talking about uh, Monica Lewinsky. Today, she, in fact, she talked about three things which uh, have affected us, because we've talked about it. First of all, she says, nobody else is going to say it, so I will. Now, I said this first. I don't, I don't want to blow my own trumpet, but some people get paid less than others, not because they're not posh enough, Steph McGovern, who claims she's underpaid at the BBC on account of being from Middlesbrough. Or a certain gender, Carrie Gracie, former China editor for the BBC, who resigned over equal pay, but for the simple reason they're not as good at their jobs as others. That's the stark reality. You know, if you're really, really good, you get more money. It doesn't matter where you come from. I was never asked, as I said. So I said exactly the same the other day. It's the reality of the jobs market and something we all have to face. Quite why women at the BBC should be exempt, I don't know. Exactly. It's like, oh, because I'm common, I come from a council estate, I'm not paid as much. Well, how would they know that? You don't tell people where you come from. I didn't produce a photograph. At my interview, oh, I didn't have an interview for a, well, I did have an interview, but it was so many years ago now. I just sort of got somebody in to do a, a line drawing, and uh, and they sort of showed that's the house I grew up in. Oh, right, so just a, a little tiny, you know, terraced house, yes, because we didn't have any money. It shouldn't affect any of the sort of money I'm going to earn, you know, just because you come from that sort of background. So that's why I was sort of a little bit sort of fed up with Steph McGovern. I thought, listen, you're doing a breakfast program, be blooming grateful, be blooming grateful. If you don't want to do it, toddle off back to where you came from you know also the fake beggars says sarah vine who exploit us and the real homeless you know unfortunately let's not be fools about it genuine homelessness is a tragedy that deserves all our attention but it shouldn't blind us to the unsavory reality that for every individual who needs help there are sadly all too many prepared to exploit their suffering and our good nature this is after ely uh, made the claim that none of their beggars were homeless. They were all people who were just collecting money. They're just bone idle. You know, there are some in London who will be frauds. They're just uh, money, money. I said the other day I went to I was in Richmond, 
mainly because I was going home, actually. I was sort of coming in and going home. And there's somebody sitting outside McDonald's with his hand out, pleading. We had a bloke, I told you, about um, three, four months ago in Twickenham, and he's on crutches. Well, we know he's lying through his teeth because he arrived in a car, managed to get out of the car and walk around the car, then picked up the crutches and then, and then sort of bounces down the street. These people are professional fraudsters. Professional fraudsters. Ellie says, good luck to your listener stuck at Cockfosters. Here's the snow in Uxbridge. Isn't that pretty? Isn't that, I don't care what anybody says. I think, I think everywhere looks so pretty with a bit of snow. I know it's a pain to drive on. I know it's an inconvenience. But if you are leaving and you're thinking of seven, I'd leave now. Because by the time you've scraped your windscreen, by the time you've sort of heated up the car, by the time you've made sure... You have made sure there's water in the bottles, haven't you? They stopped some bloke in a car once. It was one of these police programmes. And it was a little kiddie. You know, the little boy racers who've got plenty of chat. Unfortunately, not, not much brain capacity. And he's got his little souped-up car. And, uh, and he said to me, you can touch it. He said, but there's nothing the matter with it. This car is OK, because they can't speak properly. They all have to speak like that. And uh, so the policeman said, do you think so? So you're just picking on me, aren't I? You're just picking on me because you think I've got drugs. He said, no, 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 I'm just checking your car over. Anyway, the first thing he found was no water in the windscreen washer bottle, which, of course, is illegal. So he did him for that. He did him for a bald tyre. He did him for about three things. I was laughing. I was laughing at the end. Nothing like a stupid person, is there? And by God, on those programmes, they find stupid people. More of your texts and emails in a, in a moment. More from the, uh, the papers. Uh, also, those who say that they're much less satisfied than ever with their GPs. I can't believe it. I've, I've never had any complaints about my GP. Never had any complaints at all. Corbyn's equality czar, not getting paid for it, thank God is the transgender model sacked over the race row. She only lasted a few days with L'Oreal, not the brightest penny in the box, and came up with the fact that every white person is a racist. As I say, she's not, not really the cleverest person, but uh, this has nothing to do with the Labour Party, surprisingly. That's why there's no money involved. So uh, you'll probably be hearing from her at some point. LBC News Time, 6.30. We found somebody in Swindon this morning, which I'm quite excited about. We, we mentioned the fact that uh, Swindon has not been touched by the snow. Difficult to tell, actually, whether it's been touched by anything at all. But uh, bless his heart, Derek said, this is North Swindon right now. What snowflake news? They're completely devoid of snow. Completely devoid of it. It's, it's a very lovely outlook that Derek's got. Now somebody's nicked his fence. But, um, no... <laughs> Seriously, it's lovely. I'm always amazed. You know, we, I sort of say, oh, you know, we've got people li listening in Scotland, people listening in Birmingham, God love you, and now North Swindon. I wasn't aware there were actually regions of Swindon, but apparently there is. Uh, North Swindon's the one with the beach, I think, and, uh, and uh, it's lovely. But you're going to be hit with, with a lot of snow, Derek. Maybe not today, but uh, I think maybe tomorrow you could be hit, and it could be worse. I mean, you, know, you, might, you might lose the rest of your garden completely. You know, which actually wouldn't be a bad thing, would it? Having looked at the picture of it. Uh, anyway, more of your texts and emails. That uh, thunder that somebody heard wasn't by any chance a build-up of laughter from the people of Siberia at how we're coping with their snow that they've sent us, says uh, Merle. Actually, you might not be wrong on that one. You might not be. The funny thing is, all these other countries, I was looking at a... Um, where was I looking at? There was some, some documentary about people who live with these cold conditions um, in certain parts of the world, and they... They just live with it all the time. People are frozen to death. We actually get, like, three days of, um, of sort of cold weather, and immediately we, we will fall apart. Me being the first one. I'm the first person. Because it will be difficult today to get to work on time. So, hope you're prepared for the uh, excuse. We did have somebody years and years ago. They actually, they, they, they sent a thing out because we had really bad snow in London. It was, it was some years ago. And uh, I remember them saying... You know, you all, all need to make an effort to actually get into work. And he walked. He walked about six miles to get into work. I mean, I'd have been falling over, standing up, falling over, standing up. Would have been absolutely dreadful. Dreadful. Plenty of snow in our garden and uh, Beedale. Just let a spaniel out into the garden and what looks like a yeti has come back in, says Peter. See, I can visualise that. I can visualise that. I know exactly what that looks like. That'll be a long-haired spaniel. And they go out and snow just sticks to them. I don't know why. Uh, Lisa says, uh, stay warm, have a lovely day. Yes, it's the staying warm bit. It's not just for me, but for a lot of other elderly people as well. Nick will be looking at this, all of these aspects, um, uh, in his programme just after the news at 7 o'clock this morning. The beast from the east continuing to bring this extreme weather and plunging temperatures. So Nick and our team of reporters will round up how it might 
affect your journey this morning. So my advice has always been, since the beginning, set off... It's going to take you ages to defrost the blooming windscreen, unless you're in North Swindon. The Daily Mail has claimed that former Formula One boss Max Mosley published a racist leaflet during a by-election campaign in the 1960s. They will find out why this could be hugely significant now. Plus, the Chief Secretary to the Treasury, Elizabeth Truss, will join Nick to outline how the government want to encourage more schools to teach pupils maths beyond the age of 16. That's all with Nick Ferrari at breakfast this morning from 7 here on LBC. Uh, more and more, Trump hires a poll guru to win a second term. They seem to be firing people left, right and centre, don't they, in his government and family friends who've had their passes taken away and they've been, been sort of devalued, I think. Uh, drove into work, says Jason, at 3 o'clock this morning, feeling ill. So back home. That's, well, if you feel ill, don't, don't get out there. Kevin in Reading says, My boy, uh, come back from school yesterday, told me a poem he learnt which made me smile. I made myself a snowball as perfect as can be. I want to keep it as a pet and let it sleep with me. I made him some pyjamas and a pillow for his head, but last night he ran away. But first, he wet my bed. That's so charming, isn't it, really? That's a, that's a good comprehensive education in this country, ladies and gentlemen. Could be private, though. I'll have a word with Steph McGovern. She'll know about things like that. Oh, no, she won't. I just remembered. Uh, all this talk of snow, but we've got none in Bristol. I'm very disappointed, says Jen. Don't worry. You will get it. It's heading... In fact, the places at the moment who are happily going, oh, we don't have any snow, uh, will be getting deluged in the stuff. Deluged. Uh, do you ever wonder if drivers who cause the closure of an entire motorway ever feel bad about it? No. Absolutely not, Graham. I don't think they do. Otherwise, they wouldn't do that. It's like, you know, people who are drunk getting stopped. Do you think they ever think of the consequences if they actually hit somebody? No, of course they don't, because they're drunk. Very curious, says Dan in Essex. Well, you would be. You're in Essex. Oh, sorry. Very curious when celebrities buy houses worth millions. Do you, do you sort of get a mortgage? Strange question, but I'm curious. Um, I would think many of them get mortgages. It's based on their earnings. The bank would advise them, their accountants would advise them to take out a mortgage because it's tax deductible. And so they would probably do that. I mean, it would be a very foolish celebrity to buy a house outright. Unless you were a lottery winner, in which case then you probably would because that, that would become an asset. But, uh, no, I would think most of them have, have mortgages. It's just that they can probably afford a little bit more than the rest of us. I mean, I say that, you know, thinking about Cheryl and, you know, whether she'll cope in a two-bedroom flat in Chigwell uh, or whether she'll even make it to Chigwell. I'm not even sure if she drives. I'm not sure if I've ever seen a picture of Cheryl driving. I'm assuming she does normal things like go to the toilet and eat. Well, I'm not sure about the eating thing, because we had that trouble, didn't we, with Victoria Beckham? Does she eat anything? Well, not really, no. You know, I've got friends of mine. They'll be listening to this programme now. And I remember we went out to a pub in Chelmsford and uh, I bought chips and everything else. And I could see the look of horror on their face that we were going to eat chips because they're very healthy. They're very... Well, chips aren't very healthy. Now we've discovered... Did you see that? She can drive. Oh, good. What, what has she got? Cinquecento? Something really big and flashy? Bentley convertible? Anything like that? Maybe not. Uh, Bentley Continental? No. Uh, McCain oven chips or McCain chips are being used by... Nando's. Nando's use McCain chips. And you think, well, they've got to use somebody's. So does it really make any difference that they're using McCain chips? Apparently, they're, they're sort of done to their recipe, but you can pick them up for about uh, a pound a bag in the supermarkets. Because I, I don't understand why anybody wants to sort of get potatoes and peel them and boil them and cut them and then fry them. I really don't understand that at all. I thought you'd just go out and buy a bag of chips. So much easier. Uh, so that, that's how it works, uh, Dan. Uh, somebody else says, my, uh, all this talk of snow, we've got none down in East Swindon. Good Lord above, there is an East Swindon. Didn't even know these things were possible. Sounds exciting though, doesn't it, really? Uh, apologies to any offices that I'm due to service today in central London, says Tina. I left home in the van, slipping and sliding everywhere, so I turned back and came home. Emailed the boss, I hope they understand it's so dangerous. Yes, well, I'm hoping people will, do because it is dangerous it is dangerous graham in in uh, amesbury he says we have a light dusting in wiltshire well it's way too posh wiltshire to have actually proper snow isn't it just something to make it look pretty and christmas cardy but he says that you know if i'd cause people to miss flights this is through the closure of an entire motorway or be late for school or miss crucial messages that's the thing and i he's just reminded me of something very important that if you are 
getting a flight today, you have made sure that you've left plenty of time. Plenty of time. Don't, don't think you can cut corners on this one. If the snow comes down heavy, the motorways will grind to a halt. There'll be one lorry that jackknifes or one car goes into the back of the other. Before you know where you are, five mile tailback. You know, and that's where you get people driving on the hard shoulder. That's where it becomes incredibly dangerous. And that's where people start getting out their cars. You know, even more dangerous. So my advice, as always, leave plenty of time. Plenty of time. With all the streaming technology, says uh, Martin, around the world, uh, would you be able to broadcast your show from the comfort of your own home? Of course. Yeah, of course. Yes, we just put in, uh, put in a line. It's very easy to do. Yes, you get lots of people. I know a, a few broadcasters in this building who actually broadcast occasionally from home. I couldn't do it. The reason, not because the technology is not available. The technology has been available for donkey's years, donkey's years. It's just that I need the actual physicality of getting up in the morning, getting dressed, leaving, coming into work, having my cups of tea. I need that. You can't just do a programme like mine uh, and just do it because I'd be half asleep. I'd be sitting there thinking, should I leave my pyjamas on? You know, or, or do I actually get dressed? Because the big problem is, I don't wear pyjamas. Although I did find a pair the other day. When I went into hospital um, for, for another procedure, <laughs> I had to take pyjamas in. I felt so silly because I haven't worn pyjamas since I was a teenager. And they really don't fit properly. I don't know why I even bother keeping the blooming things. But, you know, at least we try. Uh, Steve, no snow along the Wales M4 yet. On the way to Bristol will keep you posted, said Andy. And uh, Julian said, you can pitch a tent in Newmarket. Not a single flake. It's going to hit you hardest. All these places which are writing in going, Steve, we haven't got any snow. You're going to get it. Uh, Steve says, Tony, can't listen to you this morning as we had a half hour power cut in Clevedon last night and two centimetres of snow. Currently hordes of the undead roaming the streets, plus plagues of lo locusts. <laughs> that is the danger, isn't it? Front pages of the papers we'll come round to in a moment. I was going to quickly bring you up to date with the showbiz stories, but to be honest with you, it was such a dreary, a dreary little collection. Sam Fahir is falling out with Fern McCann, like anybody cares. Olivia Atwood, she was some person on a, on a reality show. And, um, and uh, she's split from some bloke she was going out with. Chloe Sims, she's an old lady who was on TOWIE. I mean, she's about 70, 75 now. And uh, she's sort of complained about, uh, about uh, Mark Wright. Says he's disrespectful to his wife after he was caught liking Rita Ora. Uh, poor old Chloe Sims, honestly. She doesn't get any publicity. Nobody bothers about her. Uh, also, Mark is glued to his phone as he falls over repeatedly in Utah. And, uh, as I say, wouldn't you like to get hold of Mark Wright's phone? Can you just imagine the photos that are on it? Can't you just guess? Michelle Keegan says she doesn't sweat the small stuff with Mark, but refuses to move to L.A. permanently. Count the days. And uh, she's also reached out to her on-screen boyfriend called Luke Pasqualino. Uh, after Mark said he liked glam wrestler Brie Bella's racy photo uh, on Instagram. And so he likes that kind of thing. But he's Mark Wright, isn't he? Bless his heart. Uh, also, uh, Montana Brown finds love with a hunky model. I didn't know who Montana Brown was, actually. It turns out that uh, she, she she's 22, so she's obviously worldly wise. She met some bloke, um, I think, on Love Island, at uh, the Love Island Villa, so it's a bit bit trash. And uh, she's hanging out with a, with a hunky model. They met at Christmas, so long-term relationship for that programme. Heavens above. Uh, Kaylee Morris leaves almost nothing to the imagination. She is from X on the Beach, and that's why, because she's prepared to get everything out for anybody. You know, as long as the price is right, she'll do it. Kelly Brooke admits she no longer feels pressure to look perfect and plans for three weddings with Jeremy Parisi, despite him... He, he doesn't want to marry you, dear. Get it through your thick head. He's not interested. He knows what you're after. He's not daft. Don't marry her. Don't marry her. It'll be a nightmare. Anyway, uh, LBC News now. Six at seven o'clock this morning. Uh, Kate Moss, uh, pictured in the paper today with Cara Delevingne. They call her a supermodel. I thought she was an actress now. She can't really make up her mind what she is. Tamara Eccleston joining uh, Sister Petra for niece Lavinia's fifth birthday after hitting back at James Stunt over the tell-all interview. They're the most peculiar family, aren't they? I mean, really, so glad they're not in mine. Bernie Eccleston. And his daughters uh, returning fire after James Stunt's wincingly rude interview, in which he called the tycoon a C-list dwarf, as Britain's most toxic divorce gets even nastier. Poor Sado, honestly. Poor little James Stunt, honestly. What a delusional little man he is. Mel B appears to confirm the Spice Girls will perform at Harry and Meghan's wedding. I do hope not. 
I seriously do hope not. That could be the kiss of death, couldn't it? Don't do it. Victoria Beckham poses on crutches after... She's got a small stress fracture, but apparently she still isn't giving up heels. Oh, that's nice for her to pose a picture and show us some place. I don't know what it is. Something every day, isn't it? Uh, boozy Saturdays, mounds of toys, designer crockery, huge roast dinners and very pampered kitties. A glimpse inside Holly Willoughby's £3 million London family home. It overlooks the Thames. House two doors down, collapsed. But, uh, no, she's been there for ages. Leanne Payne laments leaving Miami, returns home to Cheryl and Baby Bear. And uh, Kimberly Walsh vows to always stand by her girls aloud BFF, which is best... What's BFF now? Best friend forever. Amid the neighbours' relationship woes. It's going to finish, isn't it? I mean, we're we not saying that. That's what the, that's what the, uh, the press seem to be saying. Zayn Malik pictured smoking a cigarette. Not a brilliant thing to do. He, he, he's, he's got... The trouble is he's out in a pair of shorts... Um, in fire, and the trouble is, he's just got the worst legs ever. You know, they're little skinny things. You know, I've seen more meat on a pencil. Perry Edwards is branded dessert by Alex Oxlade Chamberlain as fans go wild for his kinky comments. She's obviously a bit desperate, isn't she? So she'll sort of wear anything. So she's in a restaurant wearing her underwear. I mean, bit, bit, bit cheap, but there you go. Karen Clifton conceals her wedding ring. She's married to Kevin. You know, and they went to Bruce Forsyth's tribute event. As I say, she sort of went in disguise, which actually didn't make any difference because nobody knows who she is anyway. <laughs> Lee Mead discusses being in love again. And uh, they, they met at the school gates. There we go. She's got, uh, she's got a nice lad. Look after him well. James Martin accuses the BBC of discrimination over his accent. I don't know, I must have my accent checked. I don't really know what my accent is. Uh, Robert Williams reveals a battle with mental health and compares his roller coaster life with George Michael. I don't think it was anything like George Michael's. I mean, George Michael's really was the roller coaster. Elton John's mother leaves half of her £534,000 will to the XPA, who sparked her rift with her singer son, her, to whom she bequeathed two urns. Presumably to put her um, her ashes in. But uh, Elton never spoke. And uh, as I say, it was all just one of those sort of, I'm not talking to you. And I always said you should do because, you know, you're a long time not here. A long time. Penny Lancaster uh, putting on an affectionate display to Rod Stewart, who she's married to. He's 73. She's 46. She is beginning to look a little bit like his carer, which is sweet. You know, that's OK. We don't have a problem with, uh, with things like that. Also... Uh, finally, youthful share. And you can turn back the time. <laughs> I can't do it, actually. <laughs> I was going to blow a fuse. She's 71 now. She arrives in Sydney ahead of Mardi Gras. I mean, she's 71. I mean, you know, what can I tell you? So there's no need to turn it back. She was wearing a, an edgy low-cut top and a choker-style necklace. And uh, she's 71. The only, the only thing that gives it away are the jeans, really, are the worst-fitting jeans I've ever seen. But there you go. Front pages of the papers. Did Formula One tycoon lie to orgy trial? That's the, uh, the Daily Mail today. This is Max Mosley. Uh, the Daily Mirror. NHS cash for cuts. End the scourge of knife deaths. Never going to stop it. Never going to stop it. It's, it's gang fighting, isn't it? Rage of the beast for die in Siberia snowstorm chaos. No matter what you say to people, if you don't need to go out, please don't go out. Um, also, front page of The Sun, they're doing the Don't Let the Sun Get a Dime From Me. Elton's mum snubs him in a £534,000 will. What would he do with it? He's got £319 million. Doesn't need the money. Daily Express, Corbyn betrays his own Brexit voters. Killer freeze to get worse, which we told you about earlier on. Boris raises the prospect of the hard border in Ireland for the Daily Telegraph. Uh, Alexander Shulman, after 25 years at Vogue, says she can finally wear what she wants, as opposed to some of the ludicrous outfits, I'm assuming, uh, she's been made to wear up until now. The Guardian. Arctic heat wave triggers climate meltdown fears. Corbyn gets dossier on harassment. The Eye this morning. Tory rebels threaten showdown with May. And a lovely picture of people in the snow on the front page of The Times. And top police refuse to investigate crime chief. That's it.